Hello, everybody. Welcome to Time Capsule, right here on the Game Zone Quick Hot Fix. It's the show where we travel back in time to your favorite years in gaming and showcase awesome speedruns of games released in the same year. I am your host, Smooth Operative. Thank you for joining us. Tonight, we are zoning in on Y2K with a little bit of a longer speedrun of Banjo Tooie, which I'm very excited about. Uh, and I'm ready to spend some quality time with uh, our runner and this very charming game. But before we do get into the run, uh, I'd like to cover a couple of announcements with all of you. Uh, first off, if you've been watching Hotfix today, thank you, thank you. I hope you had fun with the Majora's Mask run. And a big shout out to all of our amazing supporters, your subs, Prime Gaming subs, gift subs, and bits cheered here on the Games Done Quick Twitch channel do help support the Hotfix, uh, including Time Capsule. So please consider subscribing if you do enjoy uh, your daily dose of GDQ. And also, SGDQ 2023 is coming up May 28th through June 4th live from Minneapolis, Minnesota. And if you're interested in attending the event, registration is still open from now until May 3rd. So you've got a little over a week to decide if you'd like to go. And in the meantime, you can always head on over to gamesdonequick.com for more information. Um, and with that, I would like to introduce to all of you a garage door opener who will be here for the Banjo Tui run. Hi. Hi. Thanks Welcome. for having me. <laughs> of course, so nice to have you here. So, so what's the game plan for today? So, the game plan is to do a run of uh, Banjo Tooie, no DC or any percent, no DCW, no BC. That's no delayed cutscene warp, no bit clips. Two tricks that are very banned because they make the run very fast, and we want to <laughs> be here for like an extra two and a half hours. So. <laughs> We're trying to stay here for like the cool 2014 like legacy speed run. <laughs> yeah. But um also I I uh I was told before the stream that uh, it's kind of almost the anniversary of of Garage Door Opener being on SGDQ 2018. You opened the the run, the marathon with uh Banjo Tooie. How does it feel to be back uh, kind of revisiting the game for, for GDQ? Um, it feels really good. I mean, this run is significantly longer than the run I opened that GDQ with. That was like right after a brand new any percent route as well. Uh, so I, you know, it was like that route was new for like, you know, a month. And um, this route actually got changed pretty heavily over the years. And so this one's just always been changing. So I feel like it's, I don't know. It feels good to showcase <laughs> showcase yeah. this new route to people. Well, I'm ready whenever you are. Um, you can feel free to give us the countdown. And we did start it at a very specific time. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> All right. Um, yeah, so I'm ready to go. So start her up in three, two, one, go. Awesome. Good luck. Aw, oh, thanks. So... The first thing I'm going to be doing in the run here is skipping a cutscene, and hopefully I managed to do it. Nope, I didn't. <laughs> it's okay. Banjo slid a little too much. So this is <laughs> normally the Klungo cutscene skip, um, where we uh, jump over a cutscene trigger to, you know, trigger this Klungo text. Normally you just kind of jump right over it. And so we do have to come back to Spiral Mountain later on in order to uh, free Royston the fish from a boulder. And so um, it'll save a little bit of time there. So silver linings. <laughs> yeah, well, it sets the tone, so that's good too. Yeah. Um, coming up here is the first boss fight in the run, uh, Klungo. He's Gruntilda's loyal minion. And he can give me one of three potions. Uh, in this category, we'll be fighting all three of them. And uh, they all give him like certain abilities. I really don't want to see a blue potion because it's not very marathon safe. So I'll be tanking a load of time. Red is the easiest one, uh, but the slowest one because you have to watch this cutscene of him like getting really big. So getting rid of red here is a, a pretty good start for any sort of marathon or race run. <clears throat> and uh, later on, we'll see green, which gives him uh, invisibility, and a blue potion, which lets him, like, kind of clone himself. And um, that, blue is technically the one we would want to see here for a run, but because 
because he splits himself, the clones can kind of run in the way of the eggs that you shoot at him. And um, you kind of just do a YOLO shot, and if you fail to hit the right clone, then you just reset. <laughs> so, so there's no real way of like telling which one is the correct one? No, you just oh. shoot the egg and then you're, <laughs> you just kind of run away. And if it hits him, great. But if it doesn't, then you're done. <laughs> you, send, you send it and you hope for the best. I gotcha. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <clears throat> so Isla Hags is like kind of the hub world. Every time you save and quit, you don't have to go back to Spiral Mountain. You'll just kind of start at the entrance to Isla Hags. And so it's... You know, we'll be coming and going from here, which is nice because we have to go back to Spiral Mountain a few times during the run um, to get faster swimming. There's a Jinjo there that we'll be getting. And then there's other stuff there too, but we don't grab them in this category. And this is the one Jiggy that you can't skip in um, kind of any RTA category just because it opens this door and bottles or Jam Jars, who's the one who teaches you the moves. He doesn't let you move. <laughs> he doesn't let you move into those loading zones without the Jiggy, so. So precious cargo, the Jiggies. Yeah. Jiggies are what you need to open the levels in the game, and this category collects 70 Jiggies. Now, are all of the Jiggies, like, pretty straightforward to find like they're easy to find or are some of them a little bit trickier <clears throat> some of them are easy to find but a lot of them require you doing a lot of extra stuff in banjo kazooie most of the jiggies are just kind of out and about and you just need to collect them doing a quick jump off of the white house here which is just barely close enough to the ledge in order to work <laughs> nice. which skips having to go through bottles house and uh saves a few loading zones there is some goggles that you can learn there, but again, it's not really necessary for this category. I totally forgot what I was talking about now before this. <laughs> what do the goggles normally do then? The goggles let you zoom in when you view in first person. Oh, okay. And so in the old any percent category, you would use the goggles to set up your delayed cutscene warp in Witchy World. But now we can just um, I, I guess you still you know you don't you don't do that anymore because you don't learn a game in the new any percent it's it's got to be tough um, being a speedrunner of this game for so long and trying to keep all of the strats straight and when happened when <laughs> everything yeah. like that so don't don't worry about fumbling over <laughs> these things yeah I, I have a pretty scattered brain as it is usually, and so I kind of, you know, try to fumble as best as I can through uh, <laughs> the memories. So opening levels in Banjo-Tooie isn't as easy as Kazooie. In Banjo-Kazooie, you just kind of step on the Jiggy podium and just put all the pieces in that from your inventory. But in this game, you actually have to fill in the puzzle yourself, and the puzzle pieces split up randomly from the puzzle. So the more pieces, or the higher, more jiggies needed for the puzzle, the more pieces split up. So in this first one, I think there's only five pieces to put in. But then later on, it'll go up to the entire puzzle, which is at the end of the game, which is, I don't remember, like 25 pieces, I think, or 20. Well, Chat, I have a question for you now. What is like the biggest puzzle you've ever put together? And how was the experience? <laughs> and GDO, if you have an answer, you can feel free to chime in. The biggest puzzle I put together was a 2,000 piece puzzle that was like a bunch of candy. Oh my goodness. I think was, you you win. It, <laughs> I think it took you a definitely long time. win. I went through a phase where I just like like doing puzzles. And I remember seeing this one puzzle someone was selling online that was just a bunch of bacon. And it oh was my like goodness. A, it was like a 1,200 piece puzzle, but. Candy so and bacon, sounds good. The reason the timer starts at 3.77 is because this is a manipulated Jinjo file. Um, basically what we do is we enter the file, immediately save and quit, and then um, 
and then we go back into the file after copying it to check where the jinjos are. And that's important because it gives us some extra jiggies real fast. So this particular manip manip file has the first jinjo, the white family, which is only one jinjo, um, in this little pool here. So we can quickly get an extra jiggy. And then <clears throat> on top of that, it has the orange jinjos um, pretty close in this level as well. So that way we can get a second extra jiggy. And that just saves us from having to like, you know, get some longer jiggies earlier, which uh, is nice because this category used to summon the golden Goliath from, uh, from a mumbo pad, but it doesn't anymore because we can get that one with a clockwork shot. But clockwork eggs are going to be coming much later. <laughs> and uh, they kind of break the game open a little bit. So basically the run is just get Clockworks as fast as possible and then start doing all the really fun stuff. So the Golden Goliath will make an appearance still? No. No, okay, won't <laughs> golden, make an appearance. Golden Goliath is, is gone forever. <laughs> okay, well, goodbye. <laughs> we oh. hardly knew ye. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and I missed the jump to the bridge because I thought my, I was over a little more. <laughs> so yeah, Golden Goliath used to be the used to be the the route that you would do first, just because it was you know it's it's an easy jiggy. A lot of other categories go to the second level first, just because you need a, a move from there called Bill Drill to activate a or to get to a flight pad under a big rock. But. I don't know, the routes have changed so much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, one other thing I'll be collecting is all these notes that I've been getting. Um, there's 18 note nests in a level and then one of these trouble clefts. And um, they give, or 16, sorry, and a trouble clef. And they give, um, they give the notes needed to learn these moves. So I'll need... 505 notes by the end of the run to learn the last move in uh, Grunny Industries. And what is the last move that we'll be learning? Claw Clamber Boots. Okay. Which lets us walk up these suction pads. There's a lot of moves in the game that are kind of... They're only really needed for one thing, but everything else is slower, so getting the move for that one thing is just faster. <laughs> now, do you have to grab all of them, or it's just kind of whatever will get you through the speed run? All the notes, or all the moves? All the moves. Uh, there are some moves that, with the use of just, you know, speed run strats, I guess, you don't need. Um, uh, there's a move in uh, Grunny Industries called Snooze Pack, which only really has a couple like um, purposes, but both of those are entirely obsoleted by just what you do in the runs. Um, Leg Spring is another one that's pretty useful in Grunny Industries, but it's not really useful. Like all the earlier moves have somewhat of a use that's you know important, but in any percent, you actually don't learn very moves at all, or <laughs> very many moves. You just learn enough moves to beat the game, which is <laughs> um, Regal Blaster, Clockworks, and Fire Eggs. <laughs> right on. And Split Up. You do need Split Up. I honestly, I've been actually, watching the game and I'm not, I wasn't expecting this kind of uh, almost Doom banjo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, these first person sections are uh, really difficult for a lot of new runners to get into. It's one of those things that's just like, you know, over time you will get better at it, but there's a lot of different things uh, to think about. Like, for example, moving diagonally like that is faster than just walking forward. Oh, okay. That, I, I find that that's the case in a lot of FPS yeah. games too. So interesting here so, in Banjo. So this is Target Zan, he's the first world boss. Um, we won't be fighting a lot of bosses in the game, but we'll be fighting, you know, just faster ones. And so Target Zan, you just have to like shoot the targets on his um, on his sections. The first one has, I guess they all have um, four targets that you need to hit, but 
each each um, phase has more faces that shoot these darts at you. And so you just need to like go around dodge and then kill these cats as fast as you can between the phases. The hitboxes are really uh, wide on the targets, so you don't have to aim directly at the targets. You can kind of hit if you're going right next to them. And of course, we don't have to waste any of our own eggs because we got these golden eggs, which give you just like this unlimited multi-fire. And so it's, it's a pretty it's hard pretty nice. boss fight for new people to get into, but it's one of those, you know, as you do it, you just learn how it goes. The first person sections are always kind of difficult, especially the final boss. The are final there, boss has first person sections to it. Are there any other like uh, loops in the gameplay like where you have to do a 2D side scrolling or anything like that? No. No, okay. there's a, we'll be doing all of the first person sections in this game. Um, and so they they slowly get harder and harder as we progress. <laughs> the the one I just did there for Target Zan's Temple is the easier one and then in Glitter Gulch Mine uh, later on in the run we'll be doing that one and then Clinker's Cavern which is everyone's favorite to do but you know <laughs> casual runner's nightmare uh, that one gets done much later in the run around the 2 hour-ish mark okay so because we didn't actually enter Jade Snake Grove in the first trip to uh, Mayhem Temple, we never learned uh, Grip Grab. And so I just had to do two, uh, two backflips to get up to that Trouble Cliff in Jinjo Village, and then another one to get up to Plateau. Both of those uh, usually require either Grip Grab or uh, Clockwork Eggs to grab the Trouble, but we just skipped it. And now this is a... Uh, kind of a clip into the second level without opening it. Very nice. So this section here is actually pretty difficult. I have to do uh, a, a really tight jump to a uh, build drill under a timer. And uh, I don't think I've ever had more than four seconds on this timer, but I didn't get this jump in my practice run earlier today. So we'll see if I can uh, pull it out here. So let's uh, let's see how we do here. <laughs> you, you got this. All right, and it looks like we got it. But it's not over yet. Now I have to make <laughs> now I have to make it to the gate timer. Of course. So I'll explain that in just a sec. Uh, it's gonna be close. No! <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> oh, that's really rough. All right, we didn't make it. We were so close, though. How many times would you say that's happened to you? <laughs> uh, a lot. It's pretty difficult. And so I'm doing a quick... Oh, I was going to do a quick backup where you uh, do a clip through the floor there, but I uh, <laughs> fell out of bounds by accident. No worries. So that would have been the most amazing save ever if I would have gotten that, <laughs> though. <laughs> okay. So Round while two. I run back, um, every time you learn a move from Jam Jars, he has a around 12% chance to just kind of comedically bonk his head on the uh, on the top of his uh, silo as he tries to go back in. And that's just completely just a random time loss. There isn't anything I can do about it. And so uh, we'll see how many times that happens in the run. <laughs> but hopefully not a lot. Yeah, fingers crossed, not too many. Yeah. Um, I don't know who has the record for the most bonks. I know Conditioner, an older 2E runner in the scene, has had uh, a lot of bonks um, in the like starting half of the game. Uh, I think a DK64 runner who played the game had like 
12 or 13 in a row. I My feel like it's a little foggy on the numbers, but some people have had really bad luck with uh, their bonks. All right, and now we're out of the second level. We'll come back later to get more stuff, but for now, uh, that's that's it. And now, if you have enough jiggies to open the next level, you can actually talk to these little golden obelisks and um, warp use them to warp directly back to Jiggy Wiggy's temple. Uh, it's funny, a lot of people actually don't know that you can do that, but it's just one of those, you know basic things in the game that I guess if you started the game speedrunning you probably wouldn't have ever figured it out unless you saw anyone doing it. But then one day we started incorporating it in speedruns so you get a lot of, huh, I didn't know that. <laughs> now did you um, did you play this game a lot casually like back in the day and do you feel like different about the game now that you speedrun it? Uh, absolutely. I mean, it, I think it's one of those, once you start speedrunning a game, it's hard to ever look at it different again because right. you know everything that you could be doing. So before I started streaming on Twitch, I actually did, um, I used to do Let's Plays and I did a Let's Play of Banjo-Tooie. And so I feel like if I went back and watched that over, I would kind of, you know, because I, I did that like, you know, I'd been playing it for like five or six years at that point, so I felt like I knew a lot about the game, but definitely not at the, uh, you know, at the state I do now. Right. That that'd be a fun one to rewatch on on stream sometime. Just check out the yeah. the uh, old let's play and 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 see what you can <laughs> take I, away from it. I feel a lot it. of it would be, you know embarrassing to look back on <laughs> nowadays, but it's, Fair. uh, yeah. Oops. Accidentally picking up the wrong pieces. <laughs> it's another bad thing about the, uh, put it, doing the puzzles is sometimes the puzzles are laggier than others. And so your hand can move slow and fast. And sometimes it makes it kind of hard to pick up the pieces. Right. Yeah. But you're like, pretty comfortable with the controller anyway, I would say. Uh, sort of. My controller is pretty worn from doing oh. <laughs> Ocarina of Time, so the stick is pretty loose. So, <laughs> Time but for you a new don't one. Want a good, you don't want a really good controller for this game just because you know, you want to be able to um, you know, move it around so it's not super sensitive, but that's just that, a preference thing. That's fair. So I reset here because I need to go back to Spiral Mountain. And any other time you reset and don't need to immediately, and you need to like immediately warp somewhere, it's just faster to reset and go back to the um, Isle of Hags warp. Also, luxurious lady, I see you in chat. I was thinking of Sheenie too. I just didn't have a chance to say it. <laughs> <laughs> so this is gonna save a little bit of time because I don't have to do the Klungo cutscene skip again. Um, normally at this point in the older runs, you would have grip grab, and so you would be able to grip grab over the uh, cutscene trigger instead of um, instead of having to jump over it. But since I can just run directly through it, it'll save me like two seconds maybe, so it's not all bad. And then take Royston from under the boulder and chuck him in the lake, and he'll reward me with uh, the ability to swim faster and he'll also give me more air bubbles. <clears throat> so it'll make all the swimming I need to do in uh, Jolly Rogers a little easier. Cheerio. Yeah. In the, you have to do the swim down to, um, you have to do the swim down to the bottom of JRL um, anyways. Um, in the, you know, in the older version of the, uh, in the older version of the any percent route, but nowadays you you really don't do a lot in that category because of bit clips. It's gotta feel a little weird, like Oops. looking back at, I guess, looking at the new run and seeing like how much of the game has actually been gutted from the run. Yeah, 
So I, that's I, why I, I'm happy some runs like this are still around because it's you know, it's the old category that people had fun running back then. Just it's been updated with new strats, right? Right. Yeah. So it's it's still a long category. A lot of people think it's too long to be like a middle category because any percent is less than a half hour, and a hundred percent is four and a half hours. So this is like in the middle, around three, just below three. But a lot of people still think it's a little too long. So but. that's a question for for you, chat. What do you think would be like your limit of a speed run? Like if you were going to speed run a game, how how long is it? How long is that run? Just curious. That sounds like a uh, <laughs> a pretty hot topic. I'd say for me, I start checking out around the like hour and a half mark. Yeah, I was gonna say an hour and a half, an hour forty five would be like a really good good amount of time. Yeah, especially for like a beginner too. It's long enough to where if you make a mistake, you know it's not the end of the world. You can still make up time. But when you get into a run that's like 30 minutes, the, the uh, mistakes add up quicker. Yeah. Um, so one thing that I've been doing a lot of, but I haven't really been talking about it, is zooming in and out of my camera, moving it around. Uh, Banjo-Tooie is a very laggy game. <laughs> It was made without using the ex expansion pack at all, and so you really do have to do a lot of lag reduction here and there in the game uh, in order to not, you know, drop your game to like 10 FPS sometimes. Uh, if I mess up a death warp later on in the run, uh, my game could drop as low as 3 or 4 FPS, and so I'm hoping that that doesn't happen. <laughs> It's funny to see, but it it'll uh, it'll definitely be one of those impressive to see kind of things. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, Banjo Two is usually known for its like laggy gameplay and its uh, long, long unskippable cutscenes. And uh, I'm watching my feathers uh, pretty carefully because. I think I have enough gold feathers now, but the golden red feather route for this category has changed to be pretty uh, pretty restrictive over the last couple years. And so I've gotten more feathers than I would need just in case uh, I mess up or anything. <laughs> but the gold the gold feathers do have do have a pretty uh, important use later on. <clears throat> All right, and here we have another kind of difficult jump over to this green Jinjo to save me having to grip grab along the fence, which I can't do because I don't have grip grab. <laughs> it was a nice jump. It was a nice jump. There's different ways to do that jump to be more laggy, but easier or less laggy, but harder. But I think I did the good version of it for everyone. So. That used to be the number one like reset point for me in Witchy World, but I mean even then it's I mean now it's more of a reset point because you can't back up with the grip grab ledge. Oh, <laughs> so you I just see. have to climb back up and do it again. <laughs> so this is a pretty lazy part of the run right here. Uh, Witchy World has a lot of mini games in it. And so we need to do two of them right here. And so I'll be kind of shooting balloons and jumping through hoops in a sec. <laughs> so this is the part of the game where everyone can, you know, get up and get a snack or, you know, it's, it's the same kind of thing as when you're uh, doing puzzles. Because right. puzzles are just like, put the piece in, kind of move on to the next one. <laughs> but before we do the mini games, we have to blow up the castle, so. Let's do it. I guess while I'm talking about this, I can talk about um, some other banjo stuff. Um, yeah. Because whenever I think of Crazy Castle, I think of Hoop Hurry uh, and mini game grinding. <laughs> <laughs> One of the people in our community, Hyper, he's done a lot of. Uh... Oh, I died. But that's okay, because I had to get back out there anyway. He's done a lot of Hoop Hurry, and um, the community actually has a category extension leaderboard. Uh, called the memer boards, 
where we have a bunch of individual categories that people can run, grinding mini games, grinding individual jiggies, or certain uh, certain uh, you know arbitrary things in the game. And uh, it's always fun to do when you don't feel like doing a structured run. On top of that, there's uh, Banjo Tooie Bingo. Uh, Banjo Tooie Bingo is pretty big right now because we have a tournament going for that right now. Um, yours truly is sitting in grand finals of that tournament, so <laughs> I think I've done pretty well for myself there. But I mean, it's not over until it's over. So, but the the bingo community is pretty um, pretty big, I would say, in the community. I mean, it, not big as in like you know hundreds of people, but. There's enough. There's enough to make it fun. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Uh, and with bingo, there's been lots of uh, variants to the bingo as well. So, <laughs> there's been a lot of bingo variants. And so, uh, yeah. <clears throat> so you had mentioned to me earlier that the, the tournaments were going to be going on for quite a while. You've got a lot of people um, interested in the the races. How many people do you think are participating? So in the in the Banjo Tooie Bingo tournament, there uh, there's maybe like I think nine people in it, uh, or something like that. But the Banjo Kazooie a hundred percent tournament going out right, right now, uh, being hosted by Pixel Weezy. Uh, it has around 58 people, 57 people in it. And so those races are streamed at uh, twitch.tv slash banjo race. Oh, nice. Uh, yes, sound offense. So that's another thing I was uh, getting around to mentioning after. So during mini games, you actually have infinite eggs. And so in the hoop hurry game, what you do is once you're done, you know, getting 30 points to win the game, you poop eggs and recollect them. And what it does is because you don't lose the eggs, because you have infinite eggs, you actually do get them back when you pick them up. And so that's used to just get me a nice buffer of eggs to use as like tester shots and I can use them on crispy bacon and uh, later on in the run. And it's just like a nice and easy way to, uh, you know, just fill all my eggs. Unfortunately, it only works with blue eggs, so I can't use it to like get like a ton of other eggs. But you know, blue egg, having lots of blue eggs is real nice because uh, clockwork shots are—they're um, not super precise, but they do require eggs, like tester eggs, to go through the cracks I try and shoot through, just so it doesn't. Um, just so you know, I don't fail. <laughs> right. <laughs> and so we'll be doing a lot of clockwork shots once I get clockworks later on in the game. Clockworks are incredibly busted in Banjo Tooie, and uh, I don't know what the uh, devs were thinking. <laughs> but thank goodness. I guess we'd have to ask them. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, most of the Banjo devs from like the original like team that made the game are pretty active on Twitter. I know that uh, you know they like their audience, and so tweet at them <laughs> and ask. <laughs> so that does it for the Crazy Castle segment of the run. Uh, we went in, did a couple mini games, got our eggs, and now we're uh, ready to press on. So this is everyone's favorite transformation coming up uh, in Banjo Tooie, uh, Humba Wumba. She transforms you, unlike Mumbo, who did it in the first games. And in this level, she turns you into a van that has a really fun uh, honking mechanic <laughs> to open the money doors that you come across, or the, the van doors, I guess. <laughs> I had to double check like my hearing. I was like, they, they say van? Or <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you turn... The transformations are really interesting in this game because in Banjo Kazooie it's like a walrus, a termite, but here we got a, a money van with a you know like a little armored, an armored car. <laughs> That's a styling van. Yeah, every level in this game has something that you can transform into, but we're not going to be seeing very many of them. Um, 
<laughs> the ones we're going to be skipping in this category are in the first level uh, Mayhem Temple. You get turned into a stony, which is like a... It's hard to describe what, a, what the stony is. It's like a little gray creature. <laughs> But, uh, okay. And then in the second level, we transform into a detonator uh, to detonate these TNT barrels that exist around the level. Uh, money van here. We'll be skipping the T-Rex in uh, Pterodactyl Land. And we'll be skipping the Snowball from uh, Hailfire Peaks. And in Grunny Industries, we'll be skipping the Washing Machine. <laughs> So oh, wow, I, I didn't expect all of those transformations from, uh, you know, a game, a game like this, but that's pretty funny. Yeah. Yeah, a, a stone golem, I guess that, that is kind of what a stony is. I guess they are kind of made of rocks. It's hard to tell. Banjo looks kind of furry as a stony, so... Banjo is just a little mossy... Um, stone golem. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Alright, so this is it for the van section. Pretty uh, uninteresting. Uh, a lot of people like just, you know, going around, mashing the B button, honking the horn. I did very little of that, but I can honk inside Wombas for everyone who is craving that. <laughs> um, my favorite transformation is the B. The B is the transformation that we'll be seeing last in the game, in the last... It's the last level, like, chronologically, but in the speedrun we'll be going to its second last. <clears throat> the last three levels are fairly difficult in the speedrun, and so... Um, they're really fun, but they're also really hard. <laughs> Did it take quite a long time for you to get comfortable with... Um, those levels? Um, I'm still not, really. Um, oh, okay. The, well, there you go. <laughs> the, the last level that we do in the run, Hailfire Peaks, is the shortest level by far. I think from start to finish, it's only like eight or nine minutes, but it's a lot of really difficult tricks that you have to do back to back. And so if you kind of mess it up, then it's like... Oop, I didn't mean to land in the lava there. One health is kind of dangerous here, but we will survive. Um, you have to do a lot of really difficult tricks back to back, and there's a lot of places to take damage. So um, there's that. Granny Industries is pretty difficult just because of the things you have to do in the level. Uh, there's not a lot of ways to, like, die and I feel like it's gotten easier with the newer route but it's um, it's still pretty punishing if you end up uh, dying uh, because there's a lot of things that you need to do outside of the level that you know there's no backup for if you die oh and uh, Cloud Cuckoo Land the second last level hang on a sec I need to concentrate for this we're going yeah. bigger going home okay we made the jump <laughs> Um, nice, nice. Yeah. Uh, Cloud Cuckoo Land isn't so difficult of a level, but it's kind of split up into like different pieces. And so doing all those pieces together in a fast way is uh, like as a whole is pretty difficult. And that's the end of Witchy World. We won't be coming back here again. And thank goodness for that because it's my least favorite level. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye, Witchy World. Yeah, especially in 100%, where I would have had to do another four mini games. It's uh, definitely a very mini game heavy level. I guess there's only three, but technically four. If you include the boss fight. <laughs> Yeah, this game is much bigger than Banjo-Kazooie. Um, the levels are a lot bigger, and there's a lot more stuff to do in them, so I find that's, you know, the charm of this game compared to Banjo-Kazooie. But I do like so that Banjo-Kazooie have... has much less lag, <laughs> for sure. Oh, yeah. 
Uh, so, so you probably have a lot more hours in Banjo Tooie than the first one. Yes. Was the w- did you play the first one when it came out? Uh, I did. It was one of the first N sixty four games that we actually owned. Um, oh, okay. I after I was like out of high school, like I got into speed running in like two thousand seven, two thousand eight. Uh, not speed running, but watching speed runs on Speed Demos Archive. Okay, and, um, yeah. And so, OG over here. Yeah, and so I liked watching Zelda runs and the Banjo run. And one sec. Okay, I just had to time my reset. <laughs> um, and so I spent a lot of time watching runs there. And then eventually I started just timing myself running Banjo Kazooie. Like before I even knew that streaming speedrunning was a thing, I would just like put a clock and get 100% ish. Because 100% was so hard in Banjo Kazooie back then before I knew any structured anything. <laughs> well, and did they have achievements for this back then? Or that was still kind of like a new thing too? Achievements? Well, yeah, like so. Um, today, as I'm sure a lot of you know, you know, you play a game and you get an achievement for doing something in the game. Like back then, I guess if you're oh. going for like a hundred percent, was there a, there's a screen like in the game? I guess that tells you you did a hundred percent. No, like at the end, <laughs> there's not. Okay, no. so. in, in Banjo Kazooie, you get like this special cutscene that happens if you collect all the jiggies, I think. But there's nothing you get for like collecting a hundred percent. Uh, right. A hundred percent is just kind of like you open up your totals and you have a hundred percent. So, but it's like a self, you know, achievement. Like you know, you did it. Yeah. So. <laughs> there, there are achievements on the Xbox versions of the game, but on the N sixty four, there's, there's nothing. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah. It was a, a reflection of the times. Yeah. Achievements, I feel like, weren't a huge thing back then. Mm-mm. And so it was just the achievement was beating everything. Um, so here we're learning our next egg move, ice eggs. This move is usually skipped in most, uh, I guess, in most categories, you do get it because 100% you need everything. But if you're doing any sort of runs that are, you know, fun runs or, you know, runs for the memer boards, as I mentioned, or anything, you would usually skip ice eggs because it's only really used to, uh, ooh, I want those feathers, because you, um, you need it to fight one of the dragon bosses in Hailfire Peaks, and you also need ice eggs to, uh, do a mini game called Pot of Gold in Cloud Cuckoo Land, and that's why we learn it, but that's... The only real use for ice eggs, I will use them to, um, I will use them to, uh, freeze an octopus in this level, but again, that's pretty much it. <laughs> ice eggs are, ice eggs are also really good against the final boss, I suppose. So, Jolly Roger's Lagoon is gonna look pretty fast right now. We're not going to do a whole lot in this level other than quickly get a couple notes and then fight the uh, fight the boss of the level, which is most people's least favorite boss in the game. Um, the boss. Why is that? Of, the boss of this. Whoops! I don't know where that grenade was going. Poor Jolly, we broke his door. Boggy is in Hailfire Peaks. Yeah, we'll see Boggy later. He's the last Jiggy we get in the run. <laughs> Um, the boss of this level, Lord Wufak Fak, has a lot of, uh, randomness tied to him. In order to, uh, clear his first phase, you need to blow up six boils that light up on the outside of his body. And there's three on each, each of his sides, and they can light up in any order. And so, it's oh kind goodness. of, it's kind of a troll when, you know the boils light up on opposite sides every time. And so you just kind of have to keep moving back and forth from side to side. But uh, hopefully that won't happen. <laughs> yeah, fingers crossed. Yeah. Maybe well-behaved boss, we'll see. Um, 
these Jinjos that I've been collecting, um, I mentioned earlier that it was a manipulated file, but it doesn't really matter anymore because we got the first two families completed in Mayhem Temple. Uh, each of the Jinjos have give you a Jiggy when they're, you complete their families. Uh, it goes from one Jiggy collected in the white family to nine collected for the black family. And um, so we'll be getting all 45 Jiggies. <clears throat> or all 45 Jinjos, just because they're really easy to collect and they're just kind of all in the way. Ooh, I didn't see what the fish had there. So I was looking at two things there, one of which I forgot. The Simi fish, which is the clear fish I had to turn around and look at, has a Jiggy in it, but it can appear in one of two locations. And the other thing I was looking at was on the door it, at the back of the level, there is a, a Greek code that I need to memorize that's six symbols long. And um, you can have one of uh, you can have one of three codes. And so I got the code that I seem to have been getting nonstop for the last couple days. So <laughs> nice and easy it's a to remember. Sign. Yeah. It's like, it, it, it's following me. It's following me. <laughs> the Jiggy, unfortunately, or fortunately for me, was not in the fish in Atlantis because that fish can kind of be anywhere when you leave the area. Whereas here, it's always kind of in the same spot because it's much smaller. So on my way up to Wumba's, we can just Talon Torpedo. They say a Simi fish is like a hamburger. <laughs> Because in order to get to the stuff inside, you have to go through the middle. You can't go through the top or the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> it's a pretty famous quote from GoGo -Go, TBC in the community. <laughs> Jinjos are good unless they're Trado Jinjos. Yeah, Minjos. There's 18 unique Minjos in the game, but we won't be killing any of them. Maybe. Maybe if people want me to, I'll uh, I'll kill one of them that'll be in my way later. <laughs> the ninjas we need to put up a pole. <laughs> the, the ninjas pretend to be ginjos and they scream for help, but then when you get near them, they try and attack you. There was a uh, one of them that tried to attack me earlier. So, hitting these um, these pots. Uh, in the right order opens this door over here and there you can see the code that I was looking at on the door. Uh, you only really need to look at the last two symbols because out of the three codes they all have different um, they all have different symbols at the end and so if you know the last two symbols then you'll know the whole code. Oh okay that's that's pretty nice. All right, this Jinjo box here can appear in one of four locations in this room, and that's actually the second fastest place it can spawn. So we don't have to swim too far out of the way for it. Very nice. And then another random thing in this level, as if there wasn't enough already with the see me fish and the thing, all these lockers can be the boss. And so you need to quickly like identify the one with like the rusty cracked door and blow it open. And then, of course, now we have another random thing, is this boss here who's sleeping in the bottom, Lord Wu Fak Fak. And he's a big angler fish. I really enjoy this boss, but if you get bad luck, you can lose a lot of time. And there's a fun glitch that can happen to people. Uh, if you trigger the first boil too close to him, Okay, I thought I was going to get good luck there, but sadly we didn't. Oh, we got pretty good luck though. If I can... Yeah, so when you hit him, he kind of jumps. And uh, sometimes he can hit you. And I was too close. So those were actually really good boils. If he's like at the... Uh-oh. I thought he was going to swim around the other way. He wasn't quite at the end of the locker, so he tries to turn around if he's like not far enough. And then now that he's got his eyes open, I just have to shoot some torpedoes into his eyes and uh, that'll kind of finish him off. I feel like an Ooh. average Wu-Fact-Fact fight has the fight ending at the back of the locker. 
Ideally, you want to finish it at the other side, but I mean, finishing it back here is better than finishing it at the front because then he has to swim the entire way there and you've just lost a ton of time. <laughs> <laughs> that was a really up close and personal fight. <laughs> yeah, I was a little too close uh, to his eyes for how I wanted. And, you know, sometimes it's when you're too close to him, when you're trying to get the boils, it can be hard to aim for them. But I made it work. So I did get hit by his face <laughs> once, but luckily he put me in a good position afterwards. So I was able to kind of, you know, navigate around. That's what we like to see. So when you hit him, uh, when you hit the first shot that triggers the cutscene, um, and that's like the first boil you crack, you actually get locked out of going into C-up mode, which is just called the C-up glitch. And um, it basically makes it so you can't do that uh, fight in first person. So you have to fight him like kind of like this, like with no ability to like aim with a cursor. <laughs> And it's possible to do the fight like that. I've done it like that myself before, but it's uh, it's definitely much more of a pain. And uh, I'm sure if it happened to me in a run, I would just instantly reset. Because <laughs> it's, it's pretty hard to hit the boils or the eyes when you can't aim properly. Right. <laughs> it's gotta be frustrating. Exactly. So here I'm looking for where the Jiggy is going to spawn oh, on this little pedestal. And we're done with Jolly Rogers. Um, we'll come back into the level later on um, to finish up a few more Jiggies, but we need a move from uh, Pterodactyland. We need to be able to hatch eggs and uh, then we'll come back. And so if you don't pause uh, fast enough out of the mini game, uh, Granny will kind of, she'll kick you out and then you have to sit through this animation of you like leaving the mini game area. So it's good to, it's good to be able to pause before that happens. <laughs> oh, definitely. So this is our last trip back to Spiral Mountain. A lot of people saying nice in the chat, not sure what that's about. <laughs> Um, there's a Jinjo in Spiral Mountain here that we need Talon Torpedo to uh, get to. And so we have Fast Swimming, we have Talon Torpedo. Um, now we're done with this area forever. So goodbye, Spiral Mountain. Normally, Klungo would still be standing there, uh, but because we didn't skip the cutscene, he's not there. So sad face. <laughs> <laughs> We'll be seeing Klungo in a second anyway. Uh, he's our next boss fight. And uh, like I said, we have to fight Klungo three times in this run. And so he's got two potions left to give us. He can give us either a green potion or a blue potion. Um, it doesn't really matter what potion he gives us here, but I would prefer it be a green potion just because uh, green potion, Klungo 3, like as you fight Klungo, he gets slightly bigger and slightly faster. And when, uh, when Klungo is moving, you know, really fast and he's invisible, it makes the fight uh, kind of difficult. So ideally neither of them I want, but I would rather have green here than blue. We're about to see. If I get... Yeah, we'll find out. Yeah. Okay, we got green, so that's good. <laughs> Conquer's Bad Fur Day is a very hard speed run. <laughs> I don't know if I have the patience for that game. We did have Conquer's Bad Fur Day on um, a while back, and I do remember that being a, a very, looking very challenging. So uh, I, I am in agreement with you there, GDO. Okay. I thought I shot my eggs a little too early, but uh, we were right on time. All right, so Klungo, as we fight him, he gets progressively more bruised and he's got like another black eye because he returns to Grunny and gets beat because he failed his mission. So unfortunately, Klungo is going to be getting more beatings from uh, Mr. Scrunchy, but uh, 
That's just how it is when you're evil, you know? Damn. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Luckily, he sees the error of his ways at the end of the run, but not yet. So these are Clockwork Kazooie eggs. These are what we've been working for this whole time. Uh, Clockwork Kazooie eggs, when they crack open on something, they hatch into like a little robot Kazooie. And they can be used to uh, collect things. And so we'll be using it to grab Jinjos and Jiggies and all sorts of stuff that we normally couldn't reach at Banjo. Like when in doubt, just shoot a, shoot a Clockwork egg at it. But uh, first we need to clean up the first couple levels. So we're going to be going back to Mayhem Temple. We don't have enough Jiggies yet to open up the next two levels. Usually you want to open levels in uh, pairs uh, for this category. And so we're going to be um, kind of evening out our Jiggies until we have 28. So this here is a trick called Jade Snake Grove Early, which is done in some of the other categories. You can kind of beak bomb over the top of this door. And uh, it's Whoa. always really fun. <laughs> but that was so cool looking. A lot of people have a hard time uh, getting over the top. And we need to shoot a clockwork egg at this Jinjo here because the first uh, clockwork egg you shoot has this little text box. And if it cracks and you get the text box when you're trying to collect something, it won't get collected. And now if you'll excuse me, I have to do a clockwork shot that was implemented into the route pretty recently. Normally you get dragged under by the Dragunda. But if you're in Talentrot, before you get dragged under the quicksand, he won't actually drag you under. And so you need to get like really close to the uh, the Jiggy in order to, you know, actually be able to get it. <laughs> I feel like I had to do a lot of things right there in a minute, so... Uh, yeah, my mouth is getting kind of dry from all this talking, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I figured you probably needed to concentrate if it was something newer. Yeah, it's not super hard. Uh, it's just one of those things that it has an easier way to do it and a slower way. But Okay. But, uh, you know, go big or go home. <laughs> <laughs> we, you, you got to on the GDQ uh, ch channel here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so next thing we'll be doing is another or our first clockwork warp. Um, whenever you go through a loading zone as a clockwork egg, and then you take damage and put you back to Banjo and Kazooie, the game thinks, oh, I'm in control of Banjo Kazooie. And so it puts you through instead of the clockwork. So let me just get this set up real quick here. There is randomness to this, so the egg could bounce back at me or go through the door. Unfortunately, I'm getting bad luck here. Very bad luck. All right, so I shot a clockwork through, and now I'm through the loading zone because I was in control of my characters while the loading zone was like taking place. And so we'll be using that uh, a couple different ways to kind of get through gates and uh, doors that are uh, closed. Here we have to do this tiptoe uh, motion over these brambles to not wake the caveman, but instead we just take a damage boost off the torch and then just kind of jump over. <laughs> so we still didn't wake him up, but you know, done a little faster than tiptoeing. <laughs> That's a mechanic. So when you get... Oh, yeah, go ahead. Oh, I'm, you know what? You might have been explaining it just now. <laughs> yeah. I was going to say the tiptoe mechanic is one that I wish did exist somewhere in the run. But unfortunately, it's just faster to jump over all the tiptoe areas, which are this bramble here. And then the, the snake that I... The snake jiggy I got earlier in this level, you have to kind of tiptoe over those brambles as well to not wake them up. But instead, okay. you could just jump over and grab the jiggy. So do you get like a like a boost in height when you when you jump into the fire? Yes. Okay, um, gotcha. For some reason, um, you can stand on that like torch and 
like if you stop moving, you um, hold that little golden relic I collected over your head. But for some reason, when you're standing on top of the uh, on the torch, it doesn't actually make you hold it up. And so that's like the only reason why that works. <laughs> Otherwise, uh, yeah, you would have to kind of jump in talent trot the other way around. Okay. So I'm gonna be getting an extra clockwork here just because I wanna be really safe on clockworks for this run because the clockwork route is uh, really tight in this run and especially through uh, Pterodactyl land. And so I'll probably be getting a few extra clockworks that I wouldn't be getting. Um, this code opens the prison door. There's one of three codes it could be. And so this is um, just, you know, if you get first try, second try, third try code, um, which I got second try there. <laughs> it's just a time loss waiting to happen uh, if you get first code in a PB or something. Oh yeah, it's hard to make up that time when you've got it good, like the first ch uh, chance. Yeah. <clears throat> and so freeing the prospector, or freeing the prospector's partner, we uh, get access to another Jiggy. And I'll be doing another Clockwork Warp in just a second that's actually one of the harder ones in the game in order to free Canary Mary, the crazy bird lady. There's so many interesting characters in this game. Like, I'm really kind I, of I feel shocked. Like, <laughs> I feel like that's a thing with rare games. Rare games seem okay. to have a lot of really uh, interesting characters in them. So what I did there is I pooped a grenade into a tiny hole, and then you have a very low amount of time in order to uh, kind of shoot down at the hole and get in there. And so what I'm doing here is I'm blowing open the cage and death warping at the same time, which doesn't trigger the Canary Mary cutscene, but it treats it as if it's already happened. And so now I can just kind of go on with the game and Canary Mary will be waiting for me, uh, you know, on the other side of the level to do the race later. And that skips having to watch a long, like, 30-second cutscene and then as well as um, either shoot a clockwork egg in there and blow open the cage just with that, which is what the beginner strat is. Or you could, you know, I guess you could blow open the boulders with... Uh, with the detonator, but that would just be slow. <laughs> so are there like guides for this game? Like if someone wanted to get into the speed run, is there like a beginner friendly guide somewhere to start that you know about? Because of all the route changes that have happened recently, there are, the guides are kind of hard to find. In the Banjo speedrunning discord, a lot of the guides are pinned in the resources channel. And there's some on speedrun.com as well. But um, okay. on my own YouTube channel, I actually have a large, like, exhaustive playlist of tricks, uh, tutorials that I made over the years, just because with the help of some other people in the community. And so it's meant to be kind of a one-stop shop for, like, every trick imaginable in the game. Um, and I started That's that. That's really cool. I started that just because I thought, you know, it's really nice to have speedrunning guides so, you know, new runners can just go to one place and, like, learn every trick they need to to, like, learn a run. And so, yeah. Yeah, that's very cool. I, I like when uh, there are resources available and everyone's trying to help each other out. It sounds like the banjo community is pretty cool. So Yeah, there's a lot of things that are pretty hard to make guides for, like bosses and stuff. And I mean, I only have so much time and inspiration <laughs> as well. So some some things don't have uh, don't have some guides, but eventually I would like to, you know, even something as simple as, you know, like, you know, remembering to get fries in a hundred percent. Like that's, you know, <laughs> like it's not a trick. You just, it's part of the route, but so many people forget it. Right. So they're like French fries. Yeah. In witchy oh. world, you can get burgers <laughs> and French fries from uh, two of the stands and they're used to get a jiggy in pterodactyl land by feeding the Oogle Boogles, the hungry cavemen, giving them food. Oh yeah. Well, we can't forget the French fries. Mm hmm. So this is the second first-person segment in the game, uh, Ordnance Storage. 
Um, basically, all the TNT sticks have kind of gone rampant, and uh, we need to uh, we need to kind of break them all apart so they don't detonate uh, using this technique that we learned called um, Beak Bayonet. Uh, you don't really use this move for anything else in the game. It's just, you know, you get the move for one specific Jiggy and then you never use it again. So uh, it's needed because if you shoot eggs at any of these TNT sticks, it actually just ends the minigame right there because, you know, the TNT sticks explode and the mine collapses. And so, again, like the other first person section, you want to be moving diagonally. But unlike the targets and maze, with this one, your targets are moving. And so you kind of need to have an idea of where they're going to be. So, because when you're moving diagonally, you can't see where you're going. And so you need to just kind of have, you know, a good idea of the maze. Um, and if you're too close to the TNT sticks when you beak bayonet, you just you do the animation, but because you don't actually move, you um, you know you don't actually do anything. <laughs> so right, it's weird. And then at the end of the game, we do a quick death warp just to get back to the lobby. And then this is like a good jiggy to grab. Just kind of you can't see it. You just kind of move past it. Get stuck on the door frame once or twice. You know. Easy peasy. <laughs> <laughs> and this is Canary Mary. Canary Mary is a lot of new runners uh, and casual runners' nightmares. In in uh, Glitter Gulch Mine, you only have to race her once in this category because you just need her Jiggy and that's it. That's the first thing she gives you. But if you race her a second time in this level, she'll give you a Cheeto page and then fly off to Cloud Cuckoo Land where you can race her another two times. And those two races are very infamous for being incredibly difficult because she has uh, really difficult rubber banding uh, that makes it so that, you know, unless you're mashing like a god kind of thing, you. Uh, right. Yeah, you probably won't win. But the races in Glitter Gulch Mine are pretty easy because as, yeah, long, as, I, I as long as you're ahead of her. She's moving as fast as she can. There's no rubber banding in these races. So to, to make these races go by as fast as possible, all you have to do is be ahead of her in any way. Have and you ever like hurt your hand trying to race <laughs> Canary not, Mary? Not in the first two Canary Mary races. But maybe in, in the second, in, or in, sorry, the third and fourth. In the third and fourth races, I can't mash, you know, with like, you know, forearm pressing the button. So no. I, I actually slide my fingernail over top of the button, kind of like you do with like a spoon kind of thing. Okay. But, uh, <laughs> and so I guess it combines with I'm a pretty uh, bad nail biter. And so if I've had, you know, gone a little too ham on one of my fingernails that day. Sometimes the finger really hurts to mash across the button, so that's all I can... <laughs> that, that's kind of a pain, you but... Gotta, yeah. You gotta stop biting your nails now. It's for the speed run. Yeah. Luckily, you can use any of your fingers to do it, but I don't know. I find my <laughs> right middle finger to be the only one I can mash with. I've tried two finger methods. You know, it just doesn't work out for me. Yeah, it's spoon mash strats, except with the uh, <laughs> with the finger. So this is what's called a parallel clockwork shot. Uh, I'm actually going to be ricocheting it off the side of the uh, the side of the wall there. But you can pass clockworks through really tight seams in the level that you normally wouldn't be able to. If I was standing a little bit, if I was standing a little bit more to the right. Um, I would be able to shoot the clockwork like directly through the wall instead of kind of clashing it off the inside of the wall there. And so I'll be doing a few of those clockwork shots to get um, to get some things you know behind walls and you know just in some areas that just skip having to do other things that take more time. This area is usually really dark if you have a bad TV. So if you ever play this game, oh, wow. turn up your brightness. <laughs> I can't imagine playing this on like a CRT back in the day because, you know, it is fuzzy and then also not being able to see. <laughs> yeah, I actually do play this on a CRT, but I have my brightness cranked pretty high, so 
<laughs> okay, for, nice, for that nice. one room specifically. And so here we have another clockwork shot that's pretty fun. Just to get that jiggy up there. It skips climbing the ladder, which doesn't save a lot of time, but it's it's time, you know. <laughs> Every little second counts for sure. Exactly. All right, now we're done with Glitter Gulch Mine. So before we leave Mayhem Temple, we still have two more uh, we still have two more uh, jiggies to get uh, with clockwork shots. One of them was needed, and the other one not so much. Uh, this one here for pillars. Pillars is a really fun jiggy to get uh, without clockworks because you can kind of jump up the pillars, but it's just really easy to just do that and then leave. <laughs> Clock, clockwork shots really, really trivialize a lot of the jiggies in this game. So it, the clockwork shots are really fun because um, I don't know if you've been able to see, but I do have little setups for most of them where I'm either standing in the right spot or I'm aiming at a specific thing. And so a lot of the, um, a lot of the you know, get goodisms of uh, speedrunning Tui when you start <laughs> off is just learn your uh, learn your clockwork setups because the faster you shoot them the less time you're aiming and just the faster you'll be all right so with those two jiggies we have our 28 that we were collecting and now we're ready to go open our next two levels nice so you mentioned that there are these visual cues that you look for are there any audio cues throughout the run that you you listen for um, not in this category, sort of. The backflip that I did on top of the Red House uh, at the beginning to get that treble clef, um, I use a, co a combination of a visual cue and an audio cue to get that one. But off the top of my head, I can't think of any audio cues... If any of the banjo runners who I've seen in chat can think of anything to offer up, then yeah, no worries. But, I was just kind yeah. of curious your yeah. your process and all of this. Yeah, I mean, in banjo tui, a lot of people seventy eight is a really good time for that puzzle. By the way, <laughs> hey. um, a lot of people kind of have their own setups for things. Like in the end, it's you know do what works for you. Uh, find an easy setup that you can set up really fast and um, you know just do it but yeah for sure yeah. a lot of trial and error for some people yeah. a 1000 fruit who, jiggy wiggy is the the guy who opens all the levels you complete his challenges and then he opens the level for you And yeah, Canary Mary Four only gives you a Cheeto page, so if you want all the uh, all the jiggies, yeah, you don't need to worry about Canary Mary Four. Canary Mary Four is the longest race out of all of them. <laughs> it's it's so funny. I guess like hearing you uh, describe the things in this game, like I'm, I'm sure everyone you know watching, if you're a hardcore banjo fan or you're familiar with the game, like it it all makes sense, perfectly normal. But thinking about um, trying to explain this to someone who's maybe never even seen the game it's a lot of a lot of words yeah <laughs> make it confusing yeah there's a lot of lingo that comes with uh banjo especially in in tui but i i feel like it's not super hard to get a hold of all you have to do is kind of know kind of the basic things in tui pretty much the only things you really need to know for this category are clockworks I would say clockwork shots clockworks. are like the most important part of this category. And then of course, just how to do all the hard tricks. But I mean, you could say that with any speed game. <laughs> oh, for sure. Yeah, any speed, <laughs> any speed game. Uh, but for some reason, just like Banjo, Tui, especially, it, I don't know, it, it's all making me smile a little bit. <laughs> So during those white fadeouts, I'm actually looking at uh, a timer that I have running, just so I can, uh, just so I can, you know, time my resets. If you reset too late, it doesn't really matter. You're but you're losing time, and um, if you reset too early, the game doesn't save because Banjo saves on loading zones. Every loading zone you go through, the game saves, 
And so if you don't wait long enough for the transition, like the cutscene to start, then you just, you know, the game doesn't save. So <laughs> you have Does to like... go back and do the puzzle again. Oh, okay. So it puts you back where you were, I guess, like at the previous loading zone. Uh, no, if I, well, if I reset too early, it would take me back to the title screen, but then I would... I would just I wouldn't find out that the level wasn't open until I got there and it just wasn't open. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> That's yeah. gotta be so sad it for has that to happened. happen during a run. Yeah, it has <laughs> happened, especially the uh Jolly Rogers Lagoon. So I'm gonna attempt to do kind of a difficult jump here. I don't get it very often, but it'll look cool if I do get it. Fingers crossed. I I think that was... Oh, it was good. That's hot. Nice. I, That's hot. My success rate on that trick is uh, pretty terrible, so I'm actually really happy that I got that. All right. Can we get some claps in the chat? That was awesome. Yeah, I think out of all the practice runs I've done the last couple of days, it's the first time I've got it, so... <laughs> <laughs> we take those. Yeah, we, exactly. We take those. So... Terry Dactyland, we used to do from like the bottom up, but now we uh, now we kind of start at the top and work our way down. Um, first, I just need to do a couple things down here, grabbing some notes, and um, I gotta get a Jinjo that's trapped underwater. Jinjos can breathe underwater, thank goodness. So it's not like we were too late or anything. Uh, one reason why the Red Feather route is so tight in this game is because um, not only do you use Red Feathers by flying, but every time you activate a Talon Torpedo that I just did there, you use five feathers. And so when you like chain this Talon Torpedo, that Talon Torpedo, it just kind of adds up over time. Uh, I don't think we have to do it again in this level, but we will do more like throughout the run. And so usually having around like 80 red feathers is good for a run. And here, you can't see what I'm doing, but I'm doing a series of like, uh, ha oh. I can't even see what I'm doing. But I'm not falling, so that means I'm doing it right. <laughs> we can't see yeah, it, but I'm, we believe I'm, it. I'm doing a series of these pack whack jumps oh, uh, okay. to climb the vine, and you want to do it there, uh, you know, with the camera like that because the waterfall is really laggy. It's just lag projection. Oh, that's so funny. Yeah, I was like, this looks very different in third person view. <laughs> yeah. So something that I don't think was intended is that if Banjo does a pack whack in midair, he can jump out of it. And um, that gives Banjo a double jump, which I'm fairly sure wasn't intended because it breaks a lot of the sections uh, you can do as solo Banjo. Um, in, if you're doing it up steep hills, you actually like get your jump back when you like brush the ground uh, out of a double jump, and so you can like infinitely chain jump up slopes. Uh, we don't do that in this category, but it's uh, it's uh, really funny to watch. <laughs> oh yeah, I bet. Yeah, and so Banjo's double jump is like I don't know one of the better things. Oh. All right, we crashed. <laughs> we got to go back. I actually didn't know that you could uh, tumble like that off the side of the pillar, but I guess there's a tiny little slope on the side of it or on the corner of it that I hit because normally you would either just bonk off it or you would hit the top and it would trigger this cutscene. So you hadn't seen that before? I have never tumbled like that there before. Normally you either just miss because it's such a short beak bomb that you have to do and sometimes you you're not supposed to be in flight during this cutscene but sometimes you are if you beak bomb into it <laughs> I gotcha oh no they got eaten Yeah. so he agrees that he won't digest you if you kill all the germs in his stomach that are causing him problems and uh, the funny thing about this minigame is that these germs they kind of just wander around and so it's possible to win this minigame without actually moving. And so oh, I always that is funny. I always try to go for it, but it's obviously random. So I'll see how we do. I need 75 points to win, so 
we're halfway there and I haven't really moved at all. So <laughs> we'll see if we can uh, we'll see if we can get there. And if we don't, I'll have to jump into gear. But we're on a pretty good pace as long as I keep getting blues and greens. By the way, all the mini games are the same. Red things count for one point. Green things count for two points. Blue things count for three points. All right, time's getting a little tight, and so I think we're gonna have to abandon our plans here. But it could have worked out. <laughs> it it was close. Like yeah. the 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 idea was there. Yeah, as you guys can see, hardest mini game in the game. I did like two thirds <laughs> of the mini game without actually doing anything. So. Very nice. And uh, it's actually my favorite minigame. Like, I really enjoy doing uh, Chompa's Belly, but yeah, it's definitely, definitely not a hard game. <laughs> it's funny that, that it says, like, do you want to play again? Again? Does that mean there's more germs in there? <laughs> did, oh, yeah. did we do it all? Yeah, every minigame gives you the option to play it again, uh, but obviously the answer is no. Every minigame also <laughs> gives you not. the option to uh, learn the rules, and we obviously know all the rules, so we don't need to do it. <laughs> this is another Clockwork Warp uh, used to get into the top of the mountain, which skips having to kind of climb up there ourselves. Um, some people find it really difficult just because of how you need to, you know, position yourself and position, you know, shoot your egg, but there's, uh, again, there's setups for it that work real nice. And this is our next boss of the run, Terry, the Terry Dactyl. I see what they did there. Yeah, disgruntled pterodactyl parent. So I'm going to be attempting to um, double shot him, which I did not do on that phase. So uh, if I do get it, it'll be the faster version, which I wasn't trying to do because it's. Uh, not a super marathon safe, but basically what you do is you uh, you have to you kind of hit him once, and while he's ricocheting from the first hit, he gets hit with a second grenade, and um, that causes him to take two hits at the same time. Uh, normally, he can only take three hits in a phase, but this allows him to take four or five if you do it more than once, and that skips a cycle on the fight. All right, and I didn't get it. I think I shot a little too far ahead on the uh, second egg, but I did get one. Uh, I did get one double shot. Otherwise, he would be at six health now instead of two health. So just imagine if I did that one more time, and then the fight would be over. <laughs> this gives me time no, to no uh, get more uh, get more eggs, though, which are kind of needed so to be safe. What Dingo Slayer said in chat, uh, not going for one cycle. Uh, recently, people have found that you can do one cycle by getting up on the edge of the nest and pooping a bunch of grenade eggs like in his path. And then he takes like four hits at the same time or five hits at the same time. And it's just like this shotgun of damage. And it's actually, uh, it's actually really difficult, but it's doable. <laughs> I don't you think, said this is a newer strat? Yeah, I don't think anyone's actually done it RTA in a run, but people have people have done it. One day, I'm sure, one cycle Terry will be a thing, but yeah, I'll, I think I'll pass on that one. <laughs> <laughs> Today is not that day. Yeah. And so now we see a cutscene of all of Terry's eggs. Um, Terry's actually the male pterodactyl parent. His uh, wife left him. That's his sad story. But he still Hi. wants his uh, babies. And so by defeating him, it kind of the eggs get ready to be hatched. And so in a hundred percent, we would go out and hatch all the cute little baby pterodactyl eggs. But unfortunately, we have to let them sit. Do you ever find out what happened to Terry's wife? Um, if you talk to King Jingling, he tells you some random stuff, and the only thing he says is that I think Terry was talking to Wu Fak Fak or something, and like he just like yeah, his wife recently left him or something like that. 
So I don't right. think you find out anything more than that. That's another question for the for the devs. Yeah. So it's a tragic story. And so here we have to jump through the bonfire cavern uh, and not get hit. Oh, I died. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> Whoops. Yeah. No big deal. It's uh, it's worth noting in this game. Luckily, I hit a uh, warp pad at the top of the mountain, so I can just uh, kind of go all the way up there again. <laughs> um, sometimes the mini Terry's here can be in your way, and they can knock you off, and so it's a very dangerous, uh, a very dangerous run back. Um, something that can happen is if you are jumping down slopes. Uh, you can slip out of Talon Trot. But I just didn't jump fast enough there. There we go. That's what it should have looked like. Everyone just forget what happened and pretend this is first attempt. <laughs> yeah, um, looks great to me. In Banjo-Kazooie, you can't actually flutter out of Talon Trot, but in this game you can, and it makes a lot of the jumps possible that you do. But as a side effect, you also... Um, you also can have it happen accidentally when you're jumping while going down slopes. And so when you're running down slopes, you really don't want to be jumping down them. But uh, up slopes, it's faster to jump down them. Now we have to blow up all these cavemen. These are the rock nuts. And uh, again, you're supposed to kill these guys with clockworks. It's one of the uh, intended jiggies <laughs> uh, to be gotten with clockworks. Oh, that was not a good clockwork shot. That's the side effect of having a stick that is not uh, super tight, is that when you're trying to do fine aiming like this, it kind of it kind of just decides to go its own way. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think that you feel the most comfortable on a Nintendo 64 controller, though? Like, when you think about, you know, other games and other consoles, is that your your jam? I do. It's just what I'm used to. I'm sure if I, like, put some time into, like, you know, playing on another controller, I would. But I have a bunch of, like, controller adapters to, like, you know, play on N64. Like, I originally started speedrunning on Majora's Mask, and I just... I, ha I started on the N64 version, but then I moved on to the virtual console and I just got like a, you know, a GameCube to N64 adapter. Because oh I, yeah, to, to keep it classic. Yeah, well also because I didn't really like the GameCube controller for that game, so. So that's another ricochet shot that I did earlier. You just kind of get in a specific spot and then just shoot a clockwork at a spot on the wall and it bounces onto the other side of the gate. And that skips becoming the T-Rex, which unfortunately is like a really cool transformation. But yeah, sorry guys. You don't see the T-Rex <laughs> in any speed run, so. <laughs> oh man, yeah, sorry friends. Yeah. I, I do think it's really funny though to see all the transformations because then you've got like the, the big eyes on whatever, <laughs> yeah. whatever it is, like the sub or, or you know, the, the van. Yeah. My favorite transformation like change is this game has a has a cheat room where you can enter in a bunch of cheat codes, and um, a code called Super Banjo makes you run really fast. And uh, when you're the Stony, you kind of like hobble back and forth. And so, as with Super Banjo, it happens really fast, and it looks like you're just kind of vibrating along the ground. It's really funny to watch. I wonder, is there like a meme category for that? Um. Most meme categories don't learn cheats, uh, but... Oh, okay. That's fair. That's yeah. fair. There's, uh, there's some that I guess you could do. So this is a pretty long beak bomb to get these notes that we skipped earlier. After learning um, springy step shoes, and now we get our last rock nut. And then we're pretty much done with the level. All we have left to do is run across the Stomping Plains, the most treacherous area in the level. And I almost took a damage boost onto that honeycomb. 
Cheeto percent, you don't become a stony though. So che Cheeto percent is the one category where you're allowed to use cheats though. And you enter in the Super Banjo cheat to make you run really fast. And the uh, Jiggy Wiggy special cheat, which opens all the levels. You also oh, use okay. Jiggy Wiggy special in bingo to automatically open all the levels. So you kind of have free reign to go wherever, but you still do need like moves to progress through the Isla Hags. Kazooie can turn into a dragon with the uh, Mega Globo, but that is not gotten in this category. I think at one time the Mega Globo might have been considered part of 100%, but not since I've been running the game. So getting stomped by Stomponodon's foot always takes you down to one health. Oops. And from here we do an Egg Barge, which is a hitbox extension to get the stuff on the other side of these gates without opening them. And then we Death Warp because we're done. And we have a huge overlap in audio. <laughs> Alright, and that's Pterodactyland. So we'll be going back to Jolly Rogers Lagoon in just a sec, but first we need to uh, head on up to Quagmire because the level after that is going to be Grunty Industries, uh, the, one of the last three levels. And uh, there's a, a, quick, a quick silo you can get in here to warp there. And so we'll just be using this to warp back to uh, Clifftop. Yeah, Mega Globo don't, doesn't count to the um, doesn't count for the progress. 100% is like everything that appears on the total screens, and the Mega Globo appears on the uh, like the other screen. So here I'm getting into a very specific spot, so I can aim straight up and shoot a clockwork at this Jinjo that normally requires Claw Clamber boots. And I'll be turning my camera a specific way to grab an extra clockwork here just because uh, I'll be doing not a super risky crispy bacon, but I'll be collecting a lot of my clockworks back there just so I don't have to go back to jam jars and wasteland and refill. Uh, whenever you talk to any of the jam jars that teach you eggs, uh, they'll refill the eggs of that type. And so um, once already this run, I've gone and talked to the jam jars in wasteland who will just fill me back up to 10 clockworks. Uh, it would be nice if there was any way to have more than 10 clockworks. But there's not, unless you enter a cheat code to get infinite eggs, in which case you have lots. Because the game says lots on your <laughs> counter. Does it really? That's so funny. Yeah, infinite eggs, when you bring it up instead of numbers, it just says lots. It's actually a really funny. A lot of the writing <laughs> and the jokes and stuff like that in the game, it's really a charming thing about the Banjo series. There's a lot of breaking the fourth wall in the game's writing as well, so. Now, did they do another Banjo after Tui? So after Banjo Tui, uh, I think Banjo Pilot came out. It's a Game Boy Advanced racing game. And there was also uh, Grunny's Revenge, which was another uh, banjo game for the Game Boy Advance that's kind of like top down. But then oh, there was another one for the Xbox, which most people don't like because it's not the same genre of game, but it's like a vehicle builder game. And so Banjo Kazooie. Oh, that is very different. Yeah, banjo Kazooie Nuts and Bolts is not very liked in the banjo community, but it has its runners. Now I'm curious, chat, what, what is your favorite Banjo game? Any uh, Game Boy Advance kids out there? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know very few people who've, uh, who've played uh, like a real copy of Grunny's Revenge. Uh, last year, we actually had a Grunny's Revenge tournament on the Banjo Race channel, and uh, that was fun. But the game really hurts my eyes to look at just because of the game's perspective. <laughs> Oh man, I bet. <laughs> yeah, so. Yeah, we prefer not to talk about nuts and bolts in the chat. That's pretty much the <laughs> consensus. Hmm. 
Uh, banjo Tooie is my favorite banjo game just because it's bigger. It's like more, you know, all the worlds are kind of interconnected. And it's it's quite funny too. Like it, the game has been making me laugh quite a bit. The one uh, thing about uh, Banjo Tooie speedrunning, though, compared to Banjo Kazooie, is the game feels a lot less fast paced just because Banjo Kazooie has much smaller levels, and I feel like the you have more to do in the small levels in a shorter period of time, whereas this game, a lot of it is kind of walking from point A to point B, but then you have to do a bunch of difficult stuff once you get there. Right. So, but I don't know. So it's just like I, a different I, vibe. Yeah. I, I do enjoy the vibe of this game, but I have speed ran Banjo-Kazooie for uh, a little while. But I don't know. For some reason, when I switched out of Majora's Mask, even though I'd timed myself doing all those Banjo-Kazooie runs, I don't know. I just felt like I wanted to play this game more. That's under understandable. So this is Crispy Bacon. Crispy Bacon, who is a pig, is a uh, you know, funny name. Um, it's a mini game where I have to you know, let him kind of take pictures of all the paintings. Hello? And um, I need to shoot these fish. But I also need to collect a bunch of clockworks because I don't want to go back to jam jars before Grunny Industries. And I might actually lose the game because I can't find where... Oh, it was right behind me. Okay. So I'm I'm doing like I'm afraid of losing strats right here, but ideally I wanted to get. Uh, oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! Okay, <laughs> that was. <laughs> oh, no! Oh, okay, okay. He literally opened his mouth to bite crispy bacon, <laughs> but he didn't get it. Okay, okay. I think we're good. Crispy, are you all right? Yeah, he's all right. He's all right. I'm not all right, though. I can feel myself sweating. Okay, so... <laughs> it's going to be fine. That was that was really tight. So I forgot what I was even talking about. But anyway, we need to refill up on Clockworks during this mini game, And ideally, I would have liked to have either 9 or 10. But because I had to sit there, I don't think I got that many. Let me check and see how many I have. Okay, so I have eight, so that's not bad. I can get an extra one in uh in um Spiral or uh Jinjo Village. That's the one good thing. There's eggs there, and so if you need any backups, you can uh you can get in there. So anyway, that's what a really uh panicked crispy bacon looks like. Um you can <laughs> sit on any one of the eggs. Like if I would have sat on the egg at the like the the far corner of the room, like opposite where I uh, ended up. I could have got six eggs real easy, but the strat I was going for was to try and get seven. And so it's just, you know, the more eggs you get, the better you are. But I mean, it, a lot of times it's just, you know, if you're a newer runner, it's just better to go fill up from jam jars. Or there are three eggs in um, Pano's that I could have gotten when I got that Jiggy. And so that's just a a nice like little backup and I'm getting Pano's and the extra Jinjo village eggs are better than filling up just because you have to warp all the way to the wrong area <sighs> okay so the next hard thing I have to do here is big fish so I need to shoot out some teeth on this fish uh, coming around the corner his teeth get shot out in one grenade, but you can use any egg to kind of shoot them out. And uh, it's not that bad to hit them out. Like that was a exceptionally good uh, fish teeth. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> good some fish teeth yeah. over there, GDO. <laughs> but sometimes the uh, sometimes he can really troll you, and it's it can be hard to hit the teeth. And if you miss, he's on kind of a universal game cycle swimming around the cavern. And so you kind of, you know, if you miss, you have to swim after him. And it's just a pain for everyone. He swims really fast, I guess. Uh, he doesn't, but 
it's just annoying to have to get an <laughs> angle on the teeth because you have oh, to like fair. keep moving and readjusting and moving and readjusting. So we came in here to save uh, Mary Maggie, Jolly's partner. And uh, when we go back there, he's going to give us a jiggy for all of our hard work. <clears throat> so that's almost it for Jolly Rogers. There is one jiggy from this level we're going to get later, which requires a bunch of stuff to be done in other levels. Um, the pig pool jiggy. Normally you have to warm up their pool and then also shut off the toxic sewage that's spilling into it. And you have to turn off the sewage by pushing a button in Grunny Industries that's connected to this side of the level. But we're actually going to shoot a clockwork at the button from Grunny Industries. And so we're not, it just saves time doing it there instead of here because we need to go into that room anyway. You have 100% missed that ginger just because it was red. <laughs> yeah. In in the speed in the the speed run, you kind of get to learn like what jiggies or what gingos or what color. And that one really does blend in. So down here we're uh, refueling an alien ship. Uh, very conveniently, it runs off of ice. And so we're using these ice eggs to kind of power up the ship. And um, we'll be seeing them that in is a cutscene. We'll be seeing them in a cutscene later on, but um, we won't be getting their second jiggy that they give us just because it requires a lot of stuff that isn't fast in this category. Um, there's a lot of death involved and resurrection from the dead <laughs> from uh, Mumbo in that level. Very spooky. Yeah, Mumbo's magic like isn't used anywhere in this run. Uh, it used to only be used for the Golden Goliath, but um, the spells that he does in all the random levels just like isn't really useful for the speedrun. Alright, so another thing a lot of new players forget and old players is forgetting the Jiggy down there. After the alien ship sails off, you still do need to grab their Jiggy. <laughs> Alright, and we're coming up on the last clockwork shot of the level in Smuggler's... <clears throat> Smuggler's Cavern, there's a Jiggy on this little uh, post, I guess. Oh, I I thought I uh, missed, so I blew it up early, but turned it out, it uh, made it up. Alright, and that's Jolly Rogers. So we only have three levels left to go to. And again, they're, in my opinion, the three hardest levels in the run, so. All right, I'm excited. Let's do yeah, this. Yeah, here we go. So the one worrying thing for me is that I'm down a clockwork now, and maybe two. So I'm probably going to be getting some backup clockworks in uh, Granny Industries. Again, I can get one here. And then, um, yeah, if I need more, I'll just kind of get some extras along the way. But having so many clockworks being gotten from uh, Jolly Rogers Lagoon just means I didn't need to go back to Wasteland to fill up, so I can go straight to Isle of Hags. And there's a Minjo on top, so we're going to ignore him. You kind of learn the Minjos. <laughs> so normally to enter Grunny Industries, you need to um, take the train in. That's the only way into the building in a casual playthrough, but we're going to do a clockwork warp to get inside. Um, we used to do a clockwork warp through the window at the front of the factory that I just passed, but nowadays we do a clockwork warp through the back fire exit because it skips having to like even open the front door, and that's both good and kind of bad because if I fail something later on, it's a long way around the building. And I just need to get lined up. This Clockwork Warp is very similar to the one I did for uh, uh, the one in uh, Mayhem Temple. And we're not having very good luck here. Again, it can bounce back at you instead of bouncing sideways. 
Well, and you said this is all kind of like random, whether it decides to work or not, correct? Yeah. And so there yeah. we go. If if I would have shot my clockwork <laughs> too early and the grenade wouldn't have, uh, you know, damaged me, the clockwork would have ran through. And normally that's bad. But for this particular clockwork warp, there's actually a button on the inside that the clockwork can press that just opens the door. So instead of having to do the clockwork warp again, I can just open the door and just walk through. So here's another Jinjo. We're almost done on the notes. And we're about to learn the last move in a sec. But first, I need to take Solo Banjo on a journey. Taking damage there was not ideal. <laughs> in fact, it was very unsafe. But, and I don't want to get too close to this battery because uh, if you get too close, it'll zap you. So I need to take this battery all the way down to floor one and then do uh, the trash compactor, which uh, will kill me if I do not do it right. And so <laughs> here's to hoping that I get everything done first try. Fingers crossed. Yeah, so gonna go ahead and skip that note because we'll be getting 10 notes from later in the level. There's a cursed honey hive. It'll chase me, but I'm faster than it, so it won't won't uh, get through. Alright, and there's our drop down to floor one. So after I'm done here with Banjo, we'll actually have to come down here with Banjo and Kazooie as well. Um, it's kind of a funny route because you'd think, you know, backtracking to all these areas is uh, slower, but it actually is a little bit faster, so... <laughs> I guess it just works out like that. Yeah, it's it's funny how, you know, you think there's no way, but then it gets timed and, oh, well, okay. Um, to be safe, I could try killing an enemy to get health, but the funny thing about enemies in Banjo-Tooie is that whether or not they drop health is actually random. In Banjo-Kazooie, every enemy you kill drops, like, a honeycomb, but in this game, it may or may not. So... There's not really any point. Unless I was like really concerned about not dying, which I'm not, but I really don't want to die here, so. So I guess this is where I use an audio cue and a visual cue to make it across this gap. Um, if I were to step on those like graded patterns there, um, the crushers would come down and I would die. But, you know, I managed to make it over, so... Ooh, yeah. Yeah, so the crushers always put you at one health. It's like getting stomped on by a Stomponodon. So they always put you at one health, and then if you are one health, they, um, they kill you. So luckily there's a lot of things in this game that are kind of easy like that. So now that we're done with that, we're going to take Banjo and Kazooie down to floor one, and then I will learn uh, Claw Clambers, which is only really used for one thing in the level. <laughs> which could be skipped, but isn't, because it's not faster to. I need to do a very <laughs> dangerous looking jump around the side of the building. That hopefully I can make look easier than it is. There's a clockwork shot to get uh, the tin tops jiggy so I don't have to fight those guys. Checking my eggs, and I'll be getting two clockworks for sure. I might have needed a grenade nest there, but I think I'm fine. And here we go, exactly at 505 notes, learning claw clamber boots, the last move of the run. Voila. This is one of my favorite clockwork shots in the game to grab a Jiggy that normally requires you beating the boss of this level, but it was found that you could clockwork warp uh, or uh, shoot a clockwork egg directly through this ladder in like the most convenient uh, matter po or manner possible to get the Jiggy. So if it was in any other position ever so slightly, this like wouldn't work. <laughs> oh, so wow. it's just such a good coincidence that where you can clip an egg through that ladder is directly on the path to grab the jiggy. <laughs> Very convenient. Love that. Yeah. Um, I'm actually going to check my gold feathers because I think I'm a little bit low because I'm worried about uh, 
the next level, so I'm going to grab an extra gold feather nest. Otherwise, I would risk running out, and I don't want to do that because the boss of the next level is a real pain if you uh, run out of gold feathers. Alright, so here's another egg barge to get uh, to get that. And now we're going to do a Wonderwing dive. If I cancel Wonderwing as I like go through the surface of the water, it kind of makes me dive all the way to the bottom. And then I can quickly activate a Talon Torpedo to not get immediately shot out of the acid. And that lets me kind of swim in here as much as I want instead of getting rocketed out. And then, if I position myself properly, I can get a Jiggy behind that little grate underwater. And now I have to do... Oops. Kind of a difficult... I don't know if that'll work. But it might. So this is a parallel shot to get this button that we could have gotten in JRL. Um, it's kind of a weird setup that takes some time to learn. You kind of have to just flick your stick down and move like some weird amount that isn't measured by anything other than just <laughs> turning Banjo around and taking a step. It's a setup that PG came up with. Uh, and it's it's a weird setup that doesn't seem to make sense, but it just does, so whatever. <laughs> just uh, banjo quirks. Yeah. There is another setup you can use by kind of like grip grabbing the side of the uh, the side of the ledge and getting into a certain position, but it takes a lot longer to set up. And if you're used to the the way it sets up there, then why not just use it, right? Oh, yeah, de definitely. All right, so if you're against the side of the building, which I'm not showing off very well, you actually can't get sucked under by those Dragundas. And this is the only use of Claw Clamber boots in the run. We're going to use them to climb this Claw Clamber track up the side of the building to the upper fire exit. And first we're going to do an egg barge to get a Jinjo from behind this uh, window. It's very laggy here, and so inputs can get dropped quite a lot. And now I have to do this jump around the side of the building, which I'm actually not going to talk for. Oh, okay, that was, that was my bad. <laughs> I started going for it, and then I decided, nope, you know what? <laughs> this is, that was a bad jump. Okay, so because I did what I did there, I actually have to run all the way around the building. I thought I could make it back to the... Uh, I thought I could make it back to the... Um, to the ledge so I could jump over the other side, but there's actually no ladder over there. So if you fall, you have to kind of run counterclockwise all the way around the level again. And hopefully I can make it look a lot cooler. If I would have committed to my original jump there, I probably would have got it. But I thought I slipped off. And yeah, there is there is a lot of uh, clockwork clipping and stuff like that. It's what makes the run so fun, in my opinion. Okay, let's try this again. Okay. That's what it should have looked like in the first place. <laughs> it, it does look very difficult, though. Yeah, it is it is another uh, trick that I use an audio cue for, kind of a, a video cue and an audio cue, just because you kind of need to not only jump around the building far enough, but you need to start your flap as kind of as late as possible, but not too late. Does this equate to any percent? This category used to be the old any percent years ago. And so since then, any percent has gone down to much uh, shorter <laughs> times. So, well, you said yeah. it was like, what, under 30 minutes nowadays? Yeah. yeah. I actually <laughs> don't remember what the world record is, but uh, I think Falcon has it to a... Uh, Actually, I don't know if Falcon has the record. Uh, yeah, I think it seems a, like it. I think it's a 27. 
Let's see. I realized I was looking at the wrong category. Uh, Falcon <laughs> does have a 27, but there is someone who submitted, uh, I guess, around the same time, slightly faster, but it's still a 27, so it must be yeah, tough to get be... beyond that. <laughs> yeah, that would be PG, I think. Yeah, yeah, correct. All right, so this is a lot of people's uh, hardest clockwork warp when starting out, uh, just because it's like, well, I guess not really anymore. This used to be the hardest clockwork warp in the run, in my opinion, but I don't think it is anymore. Um, ooh, I actually need grenades. Hang on. Okay. Um, after this, I have to shoot some barrels with grenades, and not having enough grenades would have been... Uh, Kind of devastating, actually. So, the setup for this is... Uh-oh. Okay, I think I blew up the clockwork there. Okay, yes. So, you can not only uh, get these clockwork warps by blowing up yourself, but also by blowing up the... Uh, by blowing up the clockwork. And now I have to shoot a series of blue barrels that come out of here. If I shoot one of these green barrels, I instantly have to reset my console. <laughs> oh my goodness. Because it makes this screen come down and I can't get to the other side. And the room like fills up with toxic gas. And if it saves like that, then this level gets a lot longer. Oh, and that was so, so nerve-wracking. Because, be, because <laughs> you don't go through a loading zone, uh, when you reset, the game doesn't save like every anything after the clockwork warp. And so you, uh, you're able to kind of go back and do it again. Whereas otherwise, I would have had to go all the way around the building, uh, and I would have had to enter this room on the other side in order to kind of vent all the toxic gas out of the room first. And uh, that would have definitely been like another 15 minutes <laughs> or more. <laughs> oh, yeah, I was about to ask like what the time loss was there. That's pretty hefty. Yeah, so the time loss for resetting is like, I think about... Uh, I guess you have to climb up the building and do the jump again. I'm not really sure the time loss on having to go back and do it because it's got to be at least two and a half minutes or so to just reset and do it again or maybe less, but you have to do a lot of stuff, so. Uh, that part, casually, you would do as the washing machine, yes. Well, you collect, you do the game as Banjo and Kazooie, but then you collect the Jiggy as the washing machine. From the other side, using the uh, service elevator. There's a bunch of doors in the level that only the uh, the washing machine can open, and that's one of them. So this is the last uh, first-person section, uh, Clinker's Cavern. You have to shoot all these little hoops that are blocking the fans in the sewer. And um, it's everyone's favorite because it's very fast-paced. Um, not only do you have to shoot, but you have to aim and move kind of low on health. You have to move and shoot and aim kind of all at the same time. And it's a lot more exciting than, uh, you know, using your beak bayonet on the TNT sticks or, uh, you know, just collecting these static tokens. So everybody always practices this minigame in the minigame menu while they're waiting for other banjo stuff to start. And so it's always, it's always funny. <laughs> so that's the end of Grunny Industries. Uh, in my opinion, Grunny Industries is the second hardest level in the game, and I don't think I did too bad other than falling off the top of the building once. You, so. you saved it. There was a, <laughs> there was a redemption arc that happened. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Banjo just gets his steps in walking around the building. Absolutely. All right, so now that we're done Grunny Industries, those were the last two levels we opened, so I have to go do open some more levels. Uh, we got four puzzles left in the game, and since this is our last 
This is our last kind of trip to uh, Wooded Hollow. I need to, whoops. I just spun around there. I gotta get this Jinjo at the end of this path here. We'll be coming here later, but I might not have any clockworks left at the end of uh, Hellfire Peaks. And so uh, it's always good to get that Jinjo now. What so, level is the hardest? It's actually Hailfire Peaks is the hardest level, and I'll be going to that one last. So, GDO, where do all the Jinjos go? Um, the Jinjos go back to their houses. Um, okay. At the beginning of uh, at the beginning of the game, uh, I was running through Jinjo Village to get to the White House in order to kind of do the jump off it to get into Wooded Hollow for the first time. Um, those are the Jinjo houses, and whenever you collect a Jinjo, they just like return back to their house. Oh, can you talk to them later? Um, they don't say anything. If you okay. go inside the houses, they're just kind of standing in a circle and they're just cheering. Just just chilling. Cheering. Yeah, cool. they're just, you know, you walk in and you hear this happy music and it's just, yay, yay. They're, they're all celebrating. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, Grunny Industries has one of the harder layouts to kind of learn just because all the floors have different things on them. In the speedrun, you never go in, well, this category, you never actually go to floor three. And so it's, you know, just easy and out of the way. But when all the rooms kind of look the same, it's really easy to, uh, you know, enter the same room. Glitter Gulch Mine is kind of the same. A lot of the branches that go off the main area kind of look the same. And so you just need to kind of wander around and, you know, eventually you'll figure it out. <laughs> um, another level that's kind of hard to get around is Cloud Cookie Land because the level itself is just a bunch of ideas like there, it's just a bunch of individual things floating in the level. Um, apparently, the dev said the idea for Cloud Cuckoo Land was just all the leftover ideas that they couldn't put into other levels. They just kind of put together in all their own like separate islands. And so that's why Cloud Cuckoo Land is kind of the way it is. So this, in my opinion, is the hardest puzzle to solve just because all the pieces kind of look the same. Um, when you're doing puzzles, you're kind of looking around at all the pieces. Like you want to look at a few pieces like um, as they split up so you have a place to start. But as you go, you kind of need to, out of the corner of your eye, like know which piece to go to next and where it goes in the picture just because the picture moves around so much. And so trying to get like good times on puzzles, even though it sounds like it's random and it sounds pretty boring to grind, um, knowing how to do the puzzles properly over the course of doing 10 puzzles does save quite a lot of time. It's not on this split, like when you're doing these puzzles, it's not uncommon to lose six or seven seconds on puzzles. It looks really tough, like just watching you do it and seeing the picture like moving around. Like, could you imagine trying to solve a puzzle like that, like in real life in front of you? I don't know if I could. <laughs> yeah. Kind of like a Harry Potter painting puzzle. <laughs> or, 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 yeah, something bizarre, definitely. Yeah, Canary Mary cheats in that race. Yeah, that's that's true. <laughs> so, um, the next two levels are going to go by pretty quick. Um, although they're pretty hard, they're also pretty uh, short. Um, Oh, whoops. I'm not supposed to get that because I'm refilling on clockworks. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we have zero clockworks. So of course we need to go to Wasteland because Wasteland is how you get to uh, Cloud Cuckoo Land anyway. And so we'll be coming over here. Jam Jar says, here you go. Now go away. And he, uh, we're good to go. And I think I'm good on all my eggs. Normally uh, this route can be kind of tight on grenade eggs as well, but I've gotten a few extra nests gone out of my way to get a few extra nests here and there, so. Um, yeah, we're all set. Um, there is one strat I'm going to be trying that I don't know if I'll be able to get in this level, but I'll go for it. It's this new skew that was found inside the wedge of cheese in order to get a jiggy without using a clockwork. 
and I would like <laughs> love to have a saved clockwork. And so, uh, yeah, we'll go for it. <laughs> um, because we're done with notes, I always kind of make it a thing to, you know, hop over this note nest right here. When you go through loading zones, you you want to, uh, you know, jumping gets you moving it to max speed. So you want to like start jumping. And then because you kind of do this slide when you stop jumping, you don't want to stop jumping once you've started. And so there, in order to get the speed to like move over, you jump over that note nest and then you just kind of do a slide into grabbing that black ginger with a clockwork egg. But I just find it funny that you just kind of, the note is like so like in your way but then you just kind of hop right over it. It's the little things, right? <laughs> yeah, definitely. So this isn't a very uh, secure safe. As you see, the clockwork egg was wide enough to just kind of go right in. So that skips having to open up the super safe stash or super, super stash safe. Is this any percent? This is any percent, no delayed cutscene warp, no bit clip. Um, that jump is needed because I don't learn leg spring in this run, which is normally required to get on top of that button. Um, it's kind of a tight jump to jump off the wall because you need to reset your slope timer, um, which I guess I haven't even talked about, but this game doesn't really use uh, slope timer stuff much. But uh, whenever you're on a super slippery slope like that one, you'll start sliding down uh, after a certain amount of time, but if your shadow passes over flat ground, um, it'll reset that timer. And so because you're on that slope for such a little time, or for such a long time in order to jump high enough, um, you kind of have to do the jump fast. This minigame, it's possible to, like when you grab the gold eggs in the middle, it'll kind of trigger Grunny's text, but it's possible to kind of jump so that you're not in the middle of this platform. And that's really bad to do for this minigame because the minigame starts where Kazooie is standing, not the middle of the platform. And so if you're off center, it won't be like symmetrical around the platform and you'll have like, your aim will be kind of off <laughs> on one side. And so it's always good to make sure that you're like exactly in the middle of the platform. Otherwise it's, uh, pretty difficult, but as you see, I'm having a pretty difficult time getting my speed uh, good enough to shoot these jiggies. Basically, the goal here is just to finish shooting all the jiggies before the timer runs out. Um, I think the most I've ha ever had on my timer is like 14 or 15 seconds left, but that's really hard to do. You really need to like get in the groove, and you also need to get like kind of lucky as well. Do you have to tap uh, whatever your input is, or do you just like hold it? Or? No, you just hold the button. You just hold the button? Okay. Yeah, if you just hold down the button, you'll just shoot as fast as you can. It's a cool rim, though. Yeah, Pot of Gold is an annoying minigame. It's also <laughs> the only reason we uh, learn ice eggs in this run. Well, aside from, you know, um, that one other thing. <laughs> <laughs> that, yeah, that thing. Uh, I meant to land on the ground there, but I missed the platform by a little bit, so Kazooie shot up into the air. Yeah, this this game's levels are, like, really pretty. And they're big. I like that there's so much to look at in all the levels. But of course, because they're so big, there's a lot of lag in some of them. So this is the trash can minigame. Uh, I need to collect a Jinjo in here and uh, some extra clockworks and get 50 points worth of germs. And so I've got a lot of stuff to do in such a short amount of time. So hopefully I don't miss this clockwork shot. A lot of learning uh, easy stuff like that is like, I guess when you start out, clockwork shots like that aren't super easy. Um, but you kind of learn how clockworks arc. And then we use one clock to get two clockworks. And now I have to get 50 points before the timer runs out, which is easier said than done if I don't stop getting these red g germs. But it should be fine. 
Um, one interesting thing about this minigame is if you talk to Guffo, you can cancel his text. But if you continuously spam him asking like to talk to him, the game will uh, hard lock. Oh, and no. I don't know why that happens, but it it's not fun when it happens. But you you have to like do it on purpose in order for it to happen. It doesn't happen by accident. All right, so I tried to blow up Kazooie before I got the text, but I didn't. So we death warp out of here. And now that's pretty much all the solo Kazooie stuff. All right, so now we go to Cheese Wedge. And in Cheese Wedge, you used to have to do a clockwork warp in order to get the Jiggy that was in there, but it was recently found that you can... Uh, well, I guess more recently found that you can skew to it with a clockwork skew, um, which is not seen anywhere else in this category. But then it was also found that you can skew without shooting a clockwork if you get a really awkward bounce off the jiggliness of the cheese <laughs> inside. That's so, a jiggliness. <laughs> yeah, I know. The cheese wedge is very bouncy because I, I don't know. It's... <laughs> The cheese wedge has holes in it, so I'm sure it's some sort of Swiss cheese, and it's soft, right? So it's bouncy, right? Definitely. <laughs> everything we'll in Click Clock, or in not Click Clock, everything in Cloud Cuckoo Land is uh, kind of bouncy. The Jelly Castle is bouncy, bouncy too, but I mean, it's made of Jello, right? So that, that's something I haven't had in ages. Jello. <laughs> yeah. And it's strawberry Jello. Yeah. Ooh. Okay. We love strawberries. Yeah, the jiggliness of the cheese. I know it's one of those things you never like think you'd ever hear, right? But here we are. So this Zava over here, I was very careful uh, with Solo Kazooie. It can really get in your way, so it's good to kind of be careful. That was the very first tutorial that I made on my YouTube channel was how to dodge the Zubba because a friend of mine in the community, a secret humor man, kept uh, dying to it. <laughs> so I made it as kind of a funny poke at him. But... <laughs> okay, so I'm going to try this for maybe a couple times, but I don't know if I'll be able to get it because it's kind of hard. Oh, we got it second try. Very nice. Nice. Practice makes perfect, I suppose. <laughs> the, the jiggliness is coming through. Yeah, I know, right? So it's kind of weird how it works. You really need to hold your jump long because if you peck too early, you kind of lose your skew. And so uh, there's all sorts of things to think about, but that's one of those tricks that I haven't bothered making a tutorial for because I don't really know how it works. But... I don't know. Do you still um, make and like upload new videos to your YouTube? Sometimes, like every year. <laughs> <laughs> what, the once a year banjo <laughs> trick. Yeah, it's it's finding the motivation to make them is a hard part, that's and a, then figuring out how to actually like come up with some sort of setup and explain it right. So this boss is a copy of Mumbo Jumbo. Uh, he can actually appear in one of two places in the level. I got really lucky and got him in the first skull I went to, and so that's very good luck. Uh, as you can see, you can kind of stand over him with gold feathers and it stun locks him in place. And so uh, it's a pretty easy boss fight if you have gold feathers. I did miss the quick kill, which you kind of hit him with an egg and then kind of stun lock him in place where he starts, so he never has the chance to warp around the room. But if you do the fight like you're um, supposed to, then it's like, it's kind of hard. <laughs> Hold up, we're not getting that Jinjo. Oh, I'm really glad somebody said that because I entirely forgot. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you. <laughs> yeah, chat keeping me at bay. You're supposed to do that before the skew. But yes, I entirely forgot the Jinjo and Cheese Wedge. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, before you do the skew, you have to get the Jinjo. It's not a banjo run unless you forget something somewhere. Okay, Jinjo has been saved. 
chat saves Yay. the day. <laughs> Otherwise, I would have had to uh, look at my totals and think about it. Evil Mumbo is the first boss you beat without help. Evil Mumbo is a very hard boss to beat by yourself. Yeah, no Jinja left behind. So now that we're done with uh, Mumbo, now we have to go murder an ice cube. Ooh, I'm glad I crashed into him and not off the edge. So George wants to be pushed down into his home of Hailfire Peaks, which is directly below the level, but we accidentally push him onto the fireside and he melts into a pool of hot water. So, so sorry, George. Bye, bye I guess. <laughs> yeah. So this is a cool strat. We'll see if I can get it. Um, in Banjo-Tooie, when you complete a Jinjo family, you get a long text box that you can't skip. And so if I'm standing in the right spot, I might be able to get blasted into the water. So you get the Jinjo, then you run your clockwork over to the other side and kind of blow up into the pool. But it seems I wasn't close enough. I think you have to be over on the other side of the carpet. But uh, yeah, either way, I keep doing it in the reverse order, but then you just stand there in front of Wumba and you can't cancel the Jinjo's text and she just waits until the Jinjo's done before talking to you, so. Yeah, G George the Ice Cube does have a wife, but we're, we're gonna kill her too, so they'll be together soon. Trust. <laughs> it's kind of funny how they put that into the game, but it just... It just so happens that she's keeping a Jinjo hostage. It's so and dark for such be, a colorful I, world. I know. <laughs> well, Hailfire Peaks is a very dark level because those aliens we saw earlier, one of them falls out of the ship and we actually get to see him like fall out of the ship and die. <laughs> oh my gosh. But luckily Mumbo's power in that level is life force. He has the ability to raise them all from the dead. And so, in 100%, you use him to resurrect Saberman, who's been, like, frozen solid in the ice since 1984. Uh, you resurrect the dead alien dad, and then one of their alien kids also died. And so you do a lot of, uh... You do a lot of life-saving in that level. <laughs> that, that's actually really reassuring. Thanks for yeah. clarifying that and telling us that. <laughs> Yeah, but it is it is very dark. I mean, the beginning cutscene of the game where the zo Jinjo J or uh, King Jingling gets uh, zombified by getting his life force sucked out. That's uh, yeah. It's a very it's a very dark game compared to the colorful Banjo Kazooie, which doesn't really have any sort of darkness to it. So it's the Majora's Mask of uh, the Banjo games. All right, <laughs> I was thinking that. So here I'm just wasting time at the beginning of the game. It takes these Zubas a second to get into the middle of the room. And if I kill them all in like clumps, they spawn again in clumps. And so I always have like a bunch of Zubas kind of flying around the center of the room. Occasionally I miss and they just kind of eventually just come out as they would. But it's a nice way to kind of start the game because there's no point in just flying around an empty arena. Um, these... The um, stingers that the bee shoots out are semi-homing, so it's kind of like the torpedoes that I was shooting as the uh, submarine earlier. They won't home in on things, but if they're close to something, they'll kind of veer in that direction. And we only need, I think we only need 50 points to win the minigame, but I always get like 60-ish. Just because sometimes, you know, all the mini games require a different number of points to win, and it's like, uh, I just, I guess I should be safe. <laughs> oh, right. So you just think of like a general number and like hope it's enough. Usually, 60 is or 70 is high enough to win most mini games. Um, some are as low as Hoop Hurry is 30, and I think the sub game is 40, I think. But okay. uh, the only game that's higher than that is the uh, Chompa game, 
that requires 75. So here I'm going to grab one extra clockwork just to be safe. This next level is very fast, but it's also very clockwork heavy. And so I'll be doing a bunch of uh, quick, quick movements. <laughs> so Hailfire Peaks has lava everywhere on one side and ice everywhere on the other side. So with the lava side, the goal is to like get everything without dying. And on the icy side, it's to get everything fast before Chilly Willy starts shooting ice balls. I need to do a clockwork shot through the floor uh, while the screen is shaking from his ice balls. And so in order to like get there in time, like just barely, I need to be fast. And so that's what makes Hailfire Peaks so difficult. So just taking a quick damage oh, over. I'm really surprised that that guy didn't knock me into the lava. And it's really good that he didn't either because I didn't want to take more than one damage there. Otherwise, I would have had to switch up what I was doing. <laughs> Ooh, yeah, that was a close call. Yeah. Luckily, if you do take damage, there are other orders you can do things. Just you might have to like do this first or that first or do the Kazooie stuff before the Banjo stuff. It really, well, I guess you never do that, but the solo Kazooie stuff, you have to swap up the order and it really messes up your splits depending on where you're splitting. So it's a minor inconvenience. <laughs> so thanks to George cooling down this water to the perfect lukewarm temperature, we're able to dump it into the pig's pool. And so they'll give us a jiggy for warming up their pool. So his sacrifice was not in vain. Aw, little piggy. Yeah. One of the pigs actually is mutated because of the toxic waste, and so he has uh, three arms. <laughs> Aw. It just, yeah. just makes the little piggy more charming. All right, so here's the first clockwork shot I'll be doing in the level. Oh, okay. I meant to uh, do those flaps and uh, wing whack in the opposite order, but somehow I managed to land on the platform, so we're good. This is another trick I'm using an audio cue for to kind of navigate this clockwork out of bounds and land in like a lower section of the arena. Um, it's definitely one of the uh, harder tricks for new runners to understand because there's a lot of mechanical things that go into making it work. And uh, yeah, luckily, if you do the jumps right, it works out just fine. So now we got to do the volcano, another little solo kazooie part. And again, the floor is lava, so we don't want to uh, we don't want to step on any of it. There's also one of the carpet dudes flying around, and so we don't want to hit him either because if you hit him, you're almost always going to hit him and immediately fall into the lava below. So it's kind of like a one-two punch that just kills you. Did you uh, ever play that game as a kid, GDO, where like you, you were oh, actually thinking the, oh, the floor was lava? Oh, oh. Okay, well, I got hit by the floor, so we're going to have to <laughs> do this with one health now. <laughs> Let's go. Right, luckily, Kazooie has two health, so the floor is lava, but we're not out yet. Solo Kazooie percent when? Unfortunately, solo characters can't go through uh, level loading zones, and so you would never be able to take a solo character everywhere. Unless you did a trick called Hybrid Banjo, which kind of tricks the game into thinking that you're both Banjo and Kazooie together when you're actually solo Banjo. And, uh,. I don't actually know how hybrid banjo works, so, but it's a, uh, it's a, uh, yeah, <laughs> it's fun. All right, so we got the jiggy in here. We killed the carpet guy somehow, and now we got one more thing left to do. There's a Jinjo hiding all the way here in the uh, icicle grotto. <coughs> Still alive, but giving you a heart attack? Well, hopefully I won't. I almost failed this jump earlier today, so... Kill the icicle. And I might have jumped a little too early. Uh, okay, we made it. That was almost too early of a jump. <laughs> 
So because this is like the end of the run, every Jinjo we collect now is kind of completing a Jinjo family. And so I'm relying on the Jinjo text uh, when I collect one on the icy side to uh, kind of hold off on Chili Willy's timer. Normally I do Shack Pack skip, uh, this trick here where it skips learning Shack Pack. Uh, the other direction, but I wanted this extra clockwork, so we're doing it the way everyone else does it today, just because, uh, you know, <laughs> we don't need any shenanigans. So how this trick works is Banjo normally gets kind of, this water is too hot to exist in, and so you kind of get like chucked out of the water immediately. But if you slide into the water as you shoot a clockwork egg, you're not ejected from the water because you're technically banjo, or you're technically the clockwork egg. And so if you go through a loading zone before switching back to banjo, like as the clockwork, um, you're able to blow up the clockwork and you're just banjo in water now. And so you're able to kind of swim under the water. Normally, you need a, need a solo banjo move, which costs 640 notes, shack pack, in order to learn or go in there. But this just kind of skips that. So another reason why clockwork eggs are just so broken. What re rendition version of the main theme other than the OG is my favorite? Oh, like... Uh, I kind of like the waiting boots from Banjo Kazooie. The claw clamber boots are fun too because it's like a. Or the springy step shoes, I mean, have a fun, like, bounce to them. Haha. -ha. <laughs> so here I'm taking damage after shooting my uh, clockwork egg, or after blowing up my clockwork egg because you. Uh, you gain control of your character faster. And I need to get this Jinjo here before Chili Billy starts talking to me. So Chili Billy won't be able to say anything until this Jinjo text is clear. And so it gives me a ton of time to kind of wander down the icy side. And um, I'm going to be listening for another audio cue in a sec. So first we're going to get this Jinjo. And now I need to set up for a clockwork shot through the floor. So I have two frames to get this clockwork shot. And I think that was the last one I could have done. Yeah. So now I have to do a parallel shot through the igloo, which a lot of people don't actually know in this. This shot isn't done in this category but it's uh, the backup. So I can assure you that that shot is much harder than I just made it look. <laughs> uh, setting it up through the igloo like that is uh, kind of hard to do. And in this category, you have Chili Billy kind of shooting at you, so... But I don't know, I've run 100% quite a lot, so it's just you get into place and shoot the clocker gig. That's the thing with setups in this game, is once you know what you're looking for, it's pretty easy to just kind of get into that position and then, you know, do it. Yeah, and I there's agree. Boggy. Make it easy. People were asking about Boggy earlier, but Boggy's given up his life of sledding and he now watches TV, so... <laughs> it's all of our dreams, right? <laughs> definitely, definitely. So we have 70 Jiggies now. That is all the jiggies in the game. So all we have left to do is beat the final boss. But first, we have to climb up to her lair. And in order to do that, we need to open another two puzzles. Or complete another two puzzles to open another two levels. <laughs> yeah, same boggy, same. <laughs> So this puzzle here isn't too bad because everything's purple and green and so it's really easy to see like you know where the purple and green kind of end. 
the next puzzle, on the other hand, is all one color. <laughs> kind of black. <laughs> and so this will be the last kind of easier puzzle to do. This puzzle also makes it easier to move the hand around because, like I was saying, some of the puzzles are laggier than others, and this puzzle is kind of laggy, so it makes the hand move uh, slower. That's pretty nice. Yeah, but on the other hand, it loses RTA time because I'm moving the hand around slower. On Xbox, these puzzles don't have any lag because Xbox is, you know, more powerful than the N64. And so you get, like, on average, way higher times uh, just because you're able to move around your hand a lot easier. Hag 1 made you want to cry. Yeah. Hag 1 is pretty difficult for a lot of people, but for every, like, skill level, there's a different way to fight Hag 1. And uh, the any percent version is harder because you need to do some uh, quick shots. But because we learn ice eggs in this category, all we have to do is kind of point and aim. Yeah, on the same hand. <laughs> yeah, Banjo always solves the puzzles with his right hand. All right, this is the last puzzle we'll be we'll be doing, and we have to fill in every piece of this puzzle. And like I said, everything is gray and brown and the same. And I don't know why I picked up that piece. <laughs> you can do it. We believe. Yeah. And so, you kind of need to solve this puzzle by like looking at the life force uh, sucking machine in the background. Whoops, that's an edge piece. Don't try and put edge pieces on the middle of the middle of the uh, puzzle, y'all. So overall, this wasn't a terrible puzzle, but definitely a lot of pieces in the wrong spots. <laughs> Bears are right-handed. <laughs> yeah, noted. So, I didn't actually see how many clockworks I had at the end of HFP, but hopefully I have at least one. Because um, in order to skip using uh, Claw Clamber Boots to get up to Cauldron Keep, I'm going to be doing a, um, a trick called the PG Teleportation Special, which is just a funny, sarcastic name <laughs> that he came up with. There's no other meaning? Uh, not really. It's just <laughs> when you blow up a clockwork against a pole and take damage or anything that you can climb, for some reason, Banjo teleports up to the location of where the clockwork blew up. Oh, weird. And so I'll be using that to warp to the pole if I get it. And I have two clockworks, so we'll be going for it at least once or at least twice. So hopefully we'll get it. Because it would be... I haven't failed it in, in, in any of my practice runs, but, you know. This category does do a quiz show, yes. I'll be doing the quiz show right after getting the Cauldron Keep and fighting Klungo for the third time. Alright. Oh, oh. Okay, I was not aiming in the right area. I need to be facing this way. Okay, there we go. Let's try this again. So yeah, for some reason, Banjo like does this up warp that just kind of jumps me onto the pole. <laughs> Whoa, yeah, that was cool. I'm, I'm uh, glad that works. Yeah, I am too. Yeah, if you look in chat, you'll see Dingo Slayer uh, wrote out the alternative name of the, uh, the trick. <laughs> Okay, uh, I understand now. <laughs> I think yeah, I understand. But for, for short, we call it the PG teleportation special, but both of them are uh, both of them are equally valid. Thanks, Jabrowski. We're almost done. So Grunty has this 
power grid blocking the entrance, but it's really easy to skip. We just kind of jump straight through it. A lot of people have trouble skipping the grid for some reason. You can jump through it with gold feathers. You can beak bust recoil through it, which kind of cancels your damage. You can go around back and turn it off, but simply just hopping through is good enough for us. So this is our last Klungo fight. Klungo is very big during this fight, and he also moves really fast, and he's gonna be moving really fast with a bunch of clones uh, moving around. So hopefully I'll get lucky and I won't end up uh, getting trolled by the clones. This fight is also one of the laggiest uh, places in the game. So I wanna shoot these potions, like kinda aiming up. Um, the real Klungo is a little brighter than the others, and so you can usually tell which one is the real one if you, like, lose track. But, uh, yeah, hopefully I don't. Okay. Klungo's uh, last shot where I shot the egg, sometimes the clones can, like, run in the way of him, and you kind of have to just you know, wait for him to get out of the way. So, um, yeah. Klungo can really troll you in his, uh, if you get blue potion last. At least if he trolls you, if you get blue potion first, you can just reset and do another run. But, yeah. Blue potion second is, he can also troll you. I mean, blue potion Klungo. Klungo in general is just a big troll. On Xbox, the, uh... On Xbox, the potions are actually a set order, so they're always the same. So that's just one thing they changed about the game. So now we have the quiz show. This is uh, you didn't say around there was 11 minutes. going to be a quiz. <laughs> <laughs> How yeah. are we supposed to know? So the quiz show is comprised of three rounds. At the end of the first two rounds, she will um, crush the loser with the lowest score, and you don't want it to be you. Uh, if there's a tie, she'll kind of randomly choose one of you to crush. And so I want to get as many questions, uh, you know, not as many right as I want, but I want to get as few points as I need to, because these picture questions can pop up, and every time the the um, game transitions between a picture question and like the normal screen here, the timer actually pauses for like a second or like a second and a half. And so every time I get a screen question, it's actually like another couple seconds onto my time doing this quiz show. So this can be a really like game ending thing. <laughs> if you have a really bad, uh, if you have a really bad, uh, yeah, the one right on the left, not the one on the right, the right one. So getting questions wrong isn't bad. Um, I just want to not lose basically the first round. So I don't have to win. I just have to not lose. And what I'm doing is I'm holding the Z button down because it makes, if you hold A, it makes text go by faster. But if you hold down the Z button, it actually makes text go by slower. And I want that because the longer Grunty talks, the more it drags out the timer. And so I just kind of want to, you know, get as few questions as possible just so there's not as many screen questions. Oh, that's a strat. Yeah. I'm going to... Oh, wow. I buzzed in, like, enough, late enough so that I heard the sound, but not enough that I answered the question. Now, are so, all of the questions the same usually, or? Uh, no, they're random. random there's like okay. in the game, there's a list of like sixty or seventy screen questions. Oh, like wow. there's sixty or seventy pictures that can pop up, and each one has like one to four questions tied to it. And so, uh, and then on top of that, there's like another like two hundred or something questions she can ask. And so, I should probably answer a question just. Oh. Okay. I should probably answer this question and the next question, like, um, pretty quick, just because I'm running low on points here. 
So this has been a really terrible first round for questions. Hopefully it gives me a screen I know. I'm actually gonna wait for the question. Uh, I think it's the blue one. Okay, it is good. Oh, and we got another screen question. So I have to answer this, because if I don't, I might lose. Uh-oh. Okay, someone answered. Hopefully it's not Blabelda. Oh, it was. Okay, so she's gonna randomly pick me or Mangela to lose. And hopefully it's not me. Oh, thank goodness. Oh, yeah, that <laughs> close okay, call. Okay, <laughs> so we didn't lose round one. <laughs> that was a little too close. <laughs> yeah, I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> so... The funny thing about that last screen question with the elevator colors is that the real answer is actually incorrect. And so, like, it's just they accidentally put the wrong answer in, like, f for, the, for the quiz show. Oh. <laughs> I am getting hammered on screen questions. Like, any more than, like, six or seven screen questions is pretty terrible. And I think this is, like, eight. Yeah, Grunty saved the run. I'm going white lights where they're on the floor. There were nine. I actually have a guide to the screen questions on my computer because I was like, maybe I should make a guide. So I took screenshots of all the different screens you can get. But obviously, I haven't studied them much. All right, looks like Blobelda is going ham on answering, so I might need to answer a couple. Yeah, some of the answers for these questions are really uh, are really funny if you look at them. They definitely towed the line with this game. <laughs> <laughs> I barely got round one. Yeah. Yeah, I'm actually gonna answer this question without seeing what the question is, because um, I know what the answer or know what all the questions are for that uh, screen. found inside cheese wedge there was a bunch of onions if people didn't notice that you actually have to like get on with sack pack doesn't study real gamer i know right <laughs> for some reason there's two different screens of this same room uh and each of them have a bunch of different questions The more you know. You meet the prospector's partner in prison, but we freed him. Or freed her, I guess. Yeah, they're onions with, like, spikes on them. I just want to say, like, I don't know if anyone's been counting these screen questions, but I have <laughs> to be at least at, like, 11. Oh, yeah. Right now or something. Like, this is very bad. <laughs> I would think this was the whole game. Okay, so it's nice that Blabelda got that question wrong because I can, um, you know, just let the timer go out. The sisters answering questions wrong are pretty optimal because not only are they not getting points, but they also let you drag out the timer even longer. And I... This will be the last question as long as Blabelda doesn't... Okay, I need to answer the next... Oh my god, it's a screen question. <laughs> well, I can't lose, so I can only lose time, but I think I know all the questions for this one, so... Uh, there's four. Um, she's asking how many yellow-tipped propellers tips are there on the big fan. So... I had really bad endings for both of my Tower of Tragedy rounds, but at least we didn't lose. <laughs> Losing round one would have been a really, uh, a really, uh, big meme. So now we have the last quiz show where we have to beat Gruntilda. All we have to do is get 15 points. And so, um, 
it's pretty easy. We have three minutes to get 15 points. That's only eight questions, right? So it's uh, pretty much just answer until you have 18, just in case. And uh, I actually don't know this question. No. So sometimes you want to just spam answer the questions as fast as possible. This is a good time for like a bathroom break right before the uh, end of the game. I mean, opening levels is a good time for that too. There's a lot of times where you can get up, grab some water. <laughs> We never saw the oil drill, but it's in Hailfire Peaks. What can be found in the Isle of Hags Quagmire area? There's a big railway bridge, which we kind of ran under. She's making a lot me of laugh. The, a lot of the questions are uh, like green or brownie yellow. <laughs> it was green, apparently. <laughs> which of these is one of Boggy's kids? Yeah, some of the questions are kind of funny. I'll get one more question right. Actually, we'll we'll keep. So, what does she transform me into? A van. The third. There's always two answers that are kind of close, and then one that's like not. And some are just like. Some are really like. What did he steal? A car. For the colorblind, yeah. <laughs> All right, so I'm sitting at 22 points, and so we're gonna we're gonna just hang out to the end. I gotta get the last question right on um, just to kind of end the round right when I want to. Uh, if you skip the last question, there's this glitch that can happen if you don't progress text very much, where when Gruntilda blasts off with a rocket, because you spent too much time in the room, the trigger for the cutscene to end never happens, and when she blasts off, it just stays there. And you just hear oh, the no. music going forever while looking at like a blank screen. And then it's Rip Run. Well, yeah, you have to reset. <laughs> And then you have to go back and do Tower of Tragedy all over again. I love Grunty's voice too. It's my favorite audio like clip in the game for people talking. <laughs> and they they keep it the same from Banjo Kazooie to Banjo Tooie. Would a tool assisted run of the game be Bang Joe Tooley? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I suppose it could be. <laughs> there are quite a few tasses of Banjo Tooie made by uh, various people. Um, Hyper and Cole made one for uh, this category, I think. Or uh, it was 70 Jiggies. And then uh, Ring Rush has made a few. Uh, various ones over the years and they all have um they're all highlighted on like their respective channels but also on the banjo race stream we've done like commentated you know viewings of them so you can have a look at them there too and then i'm sure if you search like banjo to Tass on youtube you would find all of them but some of them are pretty fun and they uh make excessive use of bit clips <laughs> to just kind of flip into the ground and skip a bunch of hard stuff. Yeah, Gogo's Grunny's Revenge Tass is pretty fun too. Banjo Tasses in general are just great. Yeah, the big gun chamber is her large ray gun. I guess this is technically her sister's castle, but they got crushed by 10 ton weights, so... So this is the final boss. It's our last um, like first person section of the game. Uh, Rareware likes making large multi-phase boss fights. And so it's like a seven minute boss fight. But uh, it's uh, a rootin' tootin' time all the way through. <laughs> 
it's a a, lot of uh uh-huh it's a garbage truck or what is it it's it's a a miner it's like a drill oh it's a drill i don't know i saw the back and i was like wait wait a second (laughs) yeah this this drill is used to like burrow in the spiral mountain that hole we went through at the beginning of the game to like save Gruntilda. So the hag one is what's written on the license plate. (laughs) And I think the boss is introduced as hag one, the large mechanical mud muncher or something like that. Oh my goodness. Yeah. So we'll be using our ice eggs for this. Um, This boss fight is pretty difficult uh, to do casually, but it's also really easy to lose time on in the speed run just because you need to like aim at her really fast in order to not get extra cycles. Um, During this fight, between like phases, she'll pop out and start asking you questions, like to do another quiz show kind of thing. Uh, Getting the questions right makes her shoot her spells slower, and so it's like, you know, nice and easy. So, you know, you can get out of the way easier, but we just kind of mash the B button to get the questions wrong, so that way, you know, because we're not going to get hit by them anyway. Oh, right. So we just mash B as fast as we can, but some of the questions she asks... Whoops, I wasn't done shooting my eggs. Some of the questions she asks during this uh, phase don't appear in Tower of Tragedy, and um, some of them are really trolly. Like, one of the questions she'll ask if you, like you know, go through this fight is like, what number am I thinking of? And the options are just one, two, and three. (laughs) Um, okay. Yeah, and so it's just, again, one of the charming things about this. (laughs) I think it's funny that she takes the time to, you know, get out of the the machine and and say say questions to you in the first place. (laughs) Yeah. Grunty just loves to to rhyme, but she doesn't actually rhyme in this game. Oh, whoops. I forgot I had to do the second mortar phase here. Grunny likes rhyming and she rhymes all through the first game, but in this game, her sisters tell her that they won't help her unless she stops, and so she doesn't actually rhyme in this game, aside from like the first couple cutscenes before they get sick of it. Uh, what number question is this? I think she can ask that during this fight, but that's a Tower of Tragedy question for sure. It's like what it's like in the game's code what number question out of all the questions can she ask is this and so the answer is like 200 something I think those are the only two really trolly questions but there's there's probably some others that are like you look at it and you're just like how is anybody supposed to know this like So here I'm going around collecting uh, some clockwork eggs. Uh, Clockworks are required to beat this fight, which is unfortunate because it would make any percent a lot faster if you didn't need clockworks. (laughs) And I'm tanking a lot of damage here, apparently. So what you do at the end of this phase is you need to shoot the clockwork eggs into the back of her drill and um, kind of blow up the batteries from the inside out. And so that shuts down the, uh, the hag one. How many bulb lights are on the screen? I know there's a, a screen question where it shows a bookshelf and it's like, how many books are there? And it's like approximately 70, 128, or like 200 something. So I'm going to be getting one more clockwork egg just in case I miss my last clockwork shot. And then I'll just be getting ice eggs for the rest of the fight. And I don't think the drill is going to be... The drill's not in a great spot. I'm going to be pretty open to the uggers, which are those little green dudes that hang around. So um, hopefully I won't get hit, but I might. We'll see. (laughs) So getting into position here, just so I can kind of shoot a clockwork egg over the lasers. And then once I hit this battery, the HAG-1 machine will be like entirely shut down and she'll kind of duel me to the death just with her spells. And uh, I'm coming up on time in the next minute or so. 
tanking a lot of damage, I say. <laughs> I know, right? So this is the part of the game I struggled a lot as a kid because here you don't have the option to kind of get her shots slowed down anymore. Um, she always shoots fast shots at you. And then eventually she um, eventually she shoots uh, whoops, toxic gas out of... Oh, my goodness. Okay, well, I shut a clockwork, apparently. As you can see, switching eggs is uh, kind of hard sometimes. Okay, there we go. We're back on track. We got blue eggs selected. <laughs> and that's like half the battle. Yeah, I know. I, again, this battle is really easy to lose time on, and it's <laughs> one of the harder boss fights in the game, for sure. Uh-oh. Ran out of blue eggs. Okay, and time... Now. Uh, no, no. Ugh. Okay, now time. The fake out. <laughs> yeah. I, she didn't want to leave. Too, I was too late on my egg shot. In order to get that last egg shot, you actually need to hit her while she's holding it above her head. Otherwise, she can take like a million egg shots and she won't die. Wow, so it just... Bam, explodes. What? So where did yeah. she go? She, she's really gone? Well, her body kind of disintegrates, but later on in the like the game ending cutscene, everyone gathers together at the top of the tower here and they play like hacky sack with her head. What? <laughs> I feel like that's also like a reflection of the times. <laughs> yeah. 2000, playing the hacky sack. That's funny. <laughs> Well, yeah, gosh. Except I think they call it kick around. But, oh, kick around. Yeah. Okay. So we're we're back with all, all the friends, I guess. Yeah. These guys were busy partying, but then, like, you know, because we had to go fight Grunny, we showed up a little too late. Um, there's a funny uh, Easter egg that most people don't see where if you go back to Bottles' house at the, like, between um, saving or between finishing Tower of Tragedy and entering the Hag 1 fight, uh, the door is locked and you can hear this like rave dance music coming from inside. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, it, and so, is it easy to get to? Oh yeah, all you have to do is just leave the area and just go back to Jinjo Village. Can we go? <laughs> yeah, or I won't be able to now because oh, okay, I've, I've already right. done it. Okay, that, that'll be something for next time, my friends. Um, thank you so much for running this uh, this game, Garage Door Opener. Uh, do you have any shout-outs or comments that you'd like to uh, leave our uh, viewers with? Um, I guess just shout-out to the Banjo community. Um, the TUI community isn't super active right now doing runs, but like I said, the Bingo community is hard at work doing Bingo. Um, I guess shout out to everyone who's found tricks for the game to make it fun. Shout outs to everyone who came to watch me tonight from the Banjo community. And yeah, I guess shout out to even the Banjo Kazooie community. Like I said, they're busy doing races right now on the Banjo Race channel with me. So. And that's just Banjo yeah. Race on Twitch, right? Yeah. Okay, Banjo Race, if you want to check out Banjo more race. of that. And, and what about your own uh, stream schedule? Here on Twitch. Uh, I stream sometimes. Okay. Okay, that's, <laughs> it's like, that's good. Sometimes I'll stream like five times, five days a week. Sometimes I'll stream five days a month. It's like just kind of... Varies. It seems to be random how I'm feeling. But, uh, you know, I do a lot of... I do some banjo stuff on stream. I do, you know, some Tui. I do a lot of Sudoku as well on stream. Oh, fun. If people like puzzles and stuff. But... Yeah, uh, if you ever want to, like, you know, ask about anything the banjo related, oh, here's on screen is the kick around. <laughs> <Here it is laughs> oh, we get to see. Casually falls out. See this at least. Aw. It's like you want to yeah. feel bad for her, but then you kind of can't. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just you wait until Banjo 3E, but then it never came out. Aw. But yeah, I'd say just join the banjo community discord if you have any questions about the game or want to get into running the game it's there's a lot of people in there who are pretty active so yeah 
Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Studio, for being here. Um, it was mentioned in the chat earlier, but I'll mention it again. If you did enjoy the run, uh, make sure you follow GDO here on Twitch, uh, twitch.tv slash garage door opener. Um, but that is going to wrap it up for Time Capsule, my friends. I hope you had fun. I definitely had fun. Uh, a reminder for those of you who'd like to be featured as a guest here on Time Capsule, uh, you can use the command exclamation mark Time Capsule right here in the Twitch chat to access that submission form. Uh, or you can always catch me on Twitch as well, twitch.tv slash smoothoperative to talk over any games that you might like to see on the show. Um, but if you are watching this on YouTube in the future, be sure to press the like button on the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and if you're interested in catching our shows live, you can always check us out, twitch.tv slash gamesdonequick. Our shows start weeknights at 7 p.m. Eastern and weekends at 1 p.m. Eastern. Tune in tomorrow for How to Train a Speedrunner, followed by Speedruns from the Crypt, all starting at 7 p.m. Eastern. I have been your host, Smooth Operative. Thank you very much for watching. Have a beautiful day or night, and we will see you next time. Goodbye.